Hi guys, thank you for joining the live stream. Thank you for waiting uh, for about two, three minutes that we are late today. It's the least late I've ever been. And this is a nice change to have in my life. And today we have back with us Professor Christoph Lysalot, also known as Dr. Mysterious Sociologist. Today we are going to discuss, again, specifically West Bengal politics and uh, the different uh, undiscussed, mysterious, sort of hidden under the topsoil sort of layers of Bengal politics that uh, pretty much uh, the majority of Bengal is not aware of and of course most of the country is not aware of okay what we, what are the inner sh inner shenanigans and inner workings of West Bengal's politics what things affect these things okay those things so thank you for joining us today uh, professor lies a lot welcome thank you Nirajan thanks for having me again so let's start with uh, why do you think is BJP going to rule West Bengal so before you and I are kicked out of the Bengali community officially yeah. for this <laughs> series of podcasts, uh, I'd like to say that I uh, firmly believe that people of people outside West Bengal have very little idea about what goes on in this North Korea that we live in. What we live in is a Sasta North Korea. If you want to visit North Korea, but you, you don't have a lot of money, then uh, come and aao kabhi bangal mein. Okay. So, we don't even have Amitabh Bachchan. We can, I, I guess I can be a brand ambassador. An yeah. anonymous uh, sociologist <laughs> who hides behind, uh, you know, a veil. Yeah. Uh, so, that's that's the, that's what you have to, that's will, that will tell you everything you need to know about West Bengal. When yeah. people talk about democracy in India, uh, people talk about uh, some great German... Uh, Third Reich person recently spoke about what fascism in India and all uh, dictatorship in India. Sorry, um, while completely ignoring 1975 to 77 when we had an emergency and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, the obvious, the most obvious thing, and they tell us India is fascist. Uh, we grew up in fascism. We're like Bane. Mm. We didn't even see democracy till we started watching Hollywood movies or something. Yeah. or Bollywood movies. We we didn't even, somebody who's never been outside West Bengal does not know that in elections, you don't kill people. So, <laughs> we we grew up hearing guns and bombs. Hmm. Uh, and for us, that was normal. Like, yeah, exactly. 100 people dying in an election is a yeah, yeah. Pretty normal thing to happen, basically. Yeah. So, my friends from uh, other parts of the country, please uh, remember all this while while trying to understand the politics yeah, uh, of West uh, professor uh, liza lot i have to interrupt you for a for a few minutes yeah. here because this is very pertinent uh, one of my non bengali viewers from jamshedpur or jharkhand or some place uh, long back when it was near the beginning of my channel so she was uh, following me because she had an interest in jay sai deepak and my books etc and the books we were discussing so one day some some news of some violence broke out in bengal and she was sending me all the screenshots of all the news, etc. That, uh, oh my God, this person got <laughs> killed for political reasons in Bengal. <laughs> so after <laughs> five... Sorry, I'm not me, laughing at the person yeah. dying. I'm like, the shock. Yeah. The shock yeah. is still genuine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so exactly that yeah. was my reaction and her reaction as well. That uh, she sent me five, six such screenshots. And after not responding to five, six, at the seventh time I responded... Yeah, what what's the big deal here? It happens every day in Bengal. And she got very angry with me. That, what, what? How can you not react to this? Why are you so indifferent to murder of fellow Bengali Hindus? Uh, so I, I had to explain her in four or five lines, the history of violence in Bengal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That will be very important in this discussion, by the way. Yeah. This, uh, this is one huge factor why you think that there is political stability in West Bengal. Yeah. Where, whereas uh, it, it it isn't stability when you're killing people and uh, <laughs> hiding the dead bodies and yeah. then saying, oh, where's the opposition? Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> it's buried under the ground, literally. Exactly. There were, that actually happened, by the way. There's yeah. a CPM leader called Shushan Dogosh, yeah. whose body, uh, whose house had like 35 skeletons and all. <laughs> uh, yeah and and when he got he of course came out of uh, jail because our judiciary yeah, 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 system yeah. is so awesome and they then he got violent on him yeah. and uh, gave him a hero's yeah. welcome yeah bitta karate part 2 <laughs> yeah yeah basically yeah 
so anyway let's um, let's get to the brass tacks hmm. why do we think that uh, why do i think that uh, bjp will rule bengal soon yeah well simply put <coughs> tremendous anti incumbency number 1 uh the present government uh has run out of favors with the people hmm. it's uh it 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 completely it has lost face it had lost face but even more so after 2022 after which half of its ministers either are in jail or are being raided uh hmm. regularly uh number 3 is there's a fatigue of sorts people hmm. of people of west bengal uh will put up with your fascist activities for 10 15 20 years hmm. before they're like oh you know I'm, i've had enough of this fascist let's go for another one yeah so something like that it's yes. not because they genuinely want democratic uh rights although i i think that some some people genuinely do hmm. it's not that it's it's like it's the same old same old if you if you don't have a new a uh, dictator in place if you don't have a new kind of um you know incumbent to take the hmm. uh bad vibes away hmm. and you have the same chief minister who is not even that effective then you are like oh let's go for something else right this gives bengal politics a very unique flavor bengal me there are no re- there's no evolution or there's no election hmm. there is only revolution yes because the cost of change is very high hmm people here if they want to change the government they don't have to just vote they have to fight against the incumbent mm. to win yeah now when you fight with sticks bombs guns whatever is at your disposal mm. you are basically risking not only your life you are risking your family and friends and everyone's lives mm. so there is a very high cost of uh, this you know creating demo, uh, de- democratic change in bengal in west bengal even bangladesh arguably because bangladesh has a very high rate of rigging uh, yeah yeah if people don't know this yeah uh, so and tripura till to, to uh, till a few years ago had a very high rate of rigging elections as well hmm. so anywhere where there is a high concentration of bengalis it seems that there is a, a lack of democratic uh, you know uh, opinions there is a lack of democracy in general mm. and uh, people like uh, mr sasta hitler should come to west bengal to uh, understand what democracy or fascism truly is mm. sitting in germany and commenting about the country is very easy uh, for people who don't know uh, anything about mm. the history of this country mm. so yeah is is uh, what was bengal always this violent at le- during uh, the pre cpim era well uh, the biggest instance of violence before the cpim came in 1977 hmm. was the nokshal movement yeah now the uh, the government brutally suppressed the nokshal movement although yeah. i have heard instances where for example bidhan chandra rai's elections were rigged in in north calcutta okay so there were <coughs> instances of rigging and um, even even there were incidents of congress workers fighting with hindu mahasabha workers uh, during uh, elections so okay <coughs> uh, there was a bit of uh, let's say some some aspects of rigging elections and all that that was there hmm. but how much the, yeah do we do we really need to worry about the rigging stuff that happened back then because i don't think anywhere in the country there were free elections going on anywhere in asia no exactly so that was uh, much less uh, you know a much dif- quite different qualitatively i would even mm-hmm. say not just a difference of quantity it's a difference of quality why because it was not widespread it wasn't across the entire state Okay. it was in parts where the let's say the ruling dispensation was a bit uh, scared of losing hmm. it was in in some important leaders uh, places or like the calcutta municipality some hmm. some places where there was a lot of money and power there some hmm. places it used to happen perhaps not everywhere hmm. okay now right. we see in the 1970s early late 60s uh, early 70s that the naxalite movement happens hmm. okay people are um, you know absolutely uh, very you know agitated uh, apparently there is a group of students who who are leading this charge hmm. and that's why there's a lot of romanticization of that time hmm. 
Of course, young people writing poems uh, and you know writing poems like "Police, tumi jato imaro maine tomar eksho baro." This kind of stuff, right? Yeah. That that aspect is very romantic and uh, you know uh, appeals to a lot of uh, middle class Bengali sentiments, right? Yeah. But but this uh, this thing people keep forgetting was actually created by outside forces. This was I not see. a genuine farmers uh, movement in any way even the tebhaga movement earlier these every movement of the pe- so so this is one other aspect of west bengal it seems that west bengal has a lot of movements mm-hmm. but what we what we fail to realize is most of the big movements that have happened yeah. since the 60s 50s all these periods even the 40s 30s mm. Uh, with the exception of perhaps Onushilan Swamiti and a few other uh, revolutionary movements that were actually <coughs> led by Indian interests, most of the movements here, radical movements, were led by outsiders. Okay. And I would blame Henry Vivian de Rosio for this. Henry Vivian, Louis, Louis Vivian de Rosio, the great um, atheist uh, hmm. uh, under the British Raj, hmm. He exo- uh, he told people to you know kind of go against Hinduism. He told people to eat beef, uh, uh, throw away their holy books and stuff. So this was like <coughs> the foreign interests meddling in our affairs. Hmm. That is a very common aspect. Even hmm. the Brahmo movement, as you know, is yeah. was a basically a foreign plant. Yeah. Now what happens in Nokshalbari in the 1970s is hmm. Nokshalbari takes it to a different extreme. Hmm. Although ironically, Nokshalbari itself has voted a BJP <laughs> for BJP in the Panchayat and uh, Vidhan Sabha and Lok Sabha elections yes. recently. So the one place they could claim as their own has lost it because <coughs> they are tea, tea workers primarily there, hmm. lower caste workers, uh, tribal tribals and hmm. all, and they want Vikas. Sadly, yeah, surprise. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought that these people want higher wages and development and yeah. and Toilets and roads, my, oh my God. God, what a crime. So anyway, <coughs> what happens with uh, Nokshalbari is the violence is extreme. Hmm. It is uh, well planned, executed and so is the repression hmm. by one of my favorite chief ministers, Siddhartha Shankar Rai. So Siddhartha Shankar Rai was also responsible for Operation Blue Star and all that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, making Punjab, uh, you know, uh, taking taking the Khali Khalistanis down. Yeah. So he yeah. he is a Bengali. He's he's one of the last surviving, uh, not surviving. He's dead now. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the last few great uh, Bengali nationalists we see, I see in Indian politics. Okay. Uh, and he was truly respected by the left, right, everyone. Hmm. He was so well respected that he used to call Jyoti Basu by his first name, which was yeah, yeah. unheard of. Yeah. He he he's a he's he's Giga Chad. He's Bangali Giga Chad. Okay. Mm. Uh in the in the sixties and seventies and even eighties, mind you. I see. So he was the Indian ambassador to the US later on. Mm. Um I mean he was very close to Indira Gandhi. Mm. And uh like I said, he's Giga Chad. So he took them down. He used brutal because yeah. obviously when you're bombing civilians and bombing random policemen. Uh, the state needs to be equally repressive to take you down, if mm. not more. Yeah. So the police obviously did a lot of things. And then um, this is a classic case of that meme where uh, a guy kills somebody and then says, oh, who killed this guy? Okay. <laughs> so the Naxalites were, uh, I, yeah. I, you know, I I, irked the police. I killed a ton of police. And now when the police are beating the crap out of me, hmm. then I'm like, oh, why are the police hitting me? Actually, okay. in terms of uh, na- the Naxals killing policemen, uh, there's a famous apology of CPIM in terms of how accepting they are of, of counter uh, ideologies, etc. Is that when Jyoti Basu became the C- uh, CM, he he freed all the political prisoners who were uh, the Naxals and who had killed many CPIM members as well. What do you think of that? Yeah, yeah it's it's like um, uh, it's 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 like if if. Uh, I don't know. There's no parallel to this. I mean, the Communist Party is uh, there. There are different versions of crap. Like it's one is dog shit, one is cat shit, one is horse shit, etc. So it's like one freeing the other for its political purposes. Because mm. if you think about it, these were these were also highly educated people because of their as we pursuant to our last conversation, these were mostly upper castes and uh, belonging to mostly 
uh, privileged families hmm. the people yeah so it wasn't necessarily out of their love for opposition to hmm. their ideology although it's one is left one is extreme left mm-hmm. so more it was uh, along the lines of who had contacts hmm. and right. this was this was uh, this was you know later on like the communist party does really well they they rebrand everything they kill people and then call it cultural revolution yeah. right so uh, they they are experts at this so this was more like who had connections hmm. and this totally worked during the naxalite era because hmm. a number of people um, for reference you can even read a fictional work by jhumpa lahiri called um, i think land between uh, I, i i keep forgetting the name of that book um, one of the more famous books she wrote later on uh it was about how a lot of and and even some movies were made about this thing mm. where the privileged naxals mostly the leaders mm. many of them are, look look at the names of the naxal leaders yeah. <clears throat> charu mojumdar kanu sharnal both brahmins by the mm. way right and uh, right now cpiml's uh, top leader's name is dipankar bhattacharya nice so uh, again going back to our last conversation yeah. so what happens is these these groups of people they are some of them are able to go abroad yeah. so you see a large number of them becoming nris and you know e- easily uh going to work for the same capital is they denounced here how yeah. that happens is a mystery hmm. uh not that much of a mystery now that we know about the toolkit gang and all that but yeah. earlier it seemed like a mystery yeah because uh what we forget we we think that just because somebody is extreme they have an ideology hmm. we think that okay this naxal is risking his life right so he must have an ideology hmm. that's not true hmm. people risk lives for higher gains right if you are working for a foreign interest hmm. and uh, you are risking your life hmm. uh, and you are adequately rewarded later hmm. that's why you risk your life in the first place it's not necessarily because you are so ideologically committed that you forget everything and jump into the foray yeah. if that were to happen so many naxalites did would not have survived okay number one number two many of them did shift uh, abroad this is a recurring theme in many even literature later on yeah even dotto versus dotto dotto versus dotto look at meghnath bodh kabbo by uh, that one onik uh, onik dotto i okay. think okay meghnath bodh kabbo has this theme where uh, the main protagonist of the movie quote yeah, i think rahasya meghnath bodh rahasya sorry mm-hmm. sorry sorry meghnath bodh rahasya Hmm. where he hmm. went to some uh, european country worked there for many years and came back hmm. and then he killed uh, people take revenge on him so yeah. the thing is the thing is that uh, a very per- one of them if i am not mistaken i will not name this person because he is a very problematic person hmm. but uh, a lot of people know him for his songs okay. and he converted to a different religion to marry another woman so you may know who i am talking about from yeah. the looks of it yeah. this person was a prominent uh, naxalite uh, yeah, if course. i am not mistaken yeah at okay. least sympathizer he did not go into the forest with guns but he was forever <laughs> a so, sympathizer is just a name for somebody who was sitting here and planning stuff so yeah. urban naxal yeah, yeah. Put it literally he was a literal urban naxal yes and uh, his uh, ideological commitment is well known right oh. so atheist say ekdam Uh, firstly brahmin then atheist then uh, then uh, muslim yeah and yeah, and people say he world. he uh, converted his really his religion only to get married the second time yes so um, well so so you know how how at which level the commitment is it's not hmm. it's primarily about material benefits that's why we must stop uh, romanticizing hmm. and and making a big deal about lefts leftists okay hmm. the left operates on the same principles that we operate on mm. on reward mechanism except perhaps we we step we stop shy of betraying our own countrymen that mm. is that is the difference between a leftist and us perhaps mm. we have a moral compass that does not allow us to do so but they uh, being atheists uh, of the highest order they for them moral compasses don't matter so they go ahead and betray the very people uh, who are around them well their moral so, compass actually compels them to betray their country because after all why have borders countries are a man made thing if there were no borders yes. you would be happily happily living with a pakistani of course, of course. hugging them in these people will uh, run uh, the first thing they get uh, after getting a green card is they'll go to the go to texas and join a 
yes. company that and work for capital yes. so yes and no wonder i mean it's their kids yeah. who have have absolutely taken over the uh, academia usa did not yeah. have these things 50 years back it was it was mainly done at the hands of nris and especially nri bengalis it hasn't yes. happened without them so this group of people has have always operated on foreign interests hmm so when we talk about regionalism in bengal and hmm. the impact of regional politics regional leaders language poetry whatever rubbish okay hmm. that is a epiphenomena that hmm. is that happens later that is not the cause of the change that we see that is primarily a result of uh, certain kinds of as i as we have been saying for a while now that upper caste interests in bengali community who mm. have uh, been able to capture power uh, in mm. successive uh, generations yeah. right so that's where we have to understand why these people have been able to um, you know influence politics here but working for foreign masters now let's come to um, 1977 mm. when the cpim takes over yeah uh now the cpim uh originally it's it also had a very violent program to come to power so yeah. how it how was its violence it it started going to the villages the leaders uh, leaders like hari krishna kona and all these people they used to go to villages and they used to tell the joddars to go against other joddars or or slightly less landed interests to to kill the uh, or kill or you know <clears throat> betray or or attack the landed interests in the village so typically a bengali village would look like this before the 70s or 60s was there was usually one upper caste by upper caste i, I can also mean local upper caste like mahishos uh, and uh, there were many many landed interests um, in bengal primarily bodhi kaisto brahmon but uh, because a large section of these people migrated to the cities so there were other castes who rose in their you know uh, place so there was a large landed interest in every village uh, these these interests were called joddars these classes were called joddar now this class was uh, you know uh, a lot of people argue that um, particularly ratnare she argues that this class always existed and i agree i concur that uh, the the caste composition used to change but mm. this but but the people who came up they also started claiming kshatriya status and all that so hmm. it's not like they did not give in to the varna jati thing they right. gave, very much they once they became yeah, the yeah. land owners hmm. they started uh, as you know the satgops yeah. and all these castes yeah. right so but uh, what used to happen is there was land large land owning caste hmm. uh, classes in in bengal what happened with the 60s was the 60s and 70s was that these people the the communists they used to uh, tell the slightly less powerful but you know more numerous people hmm. to rebel against the joddars hmm. because these were the class enemies hmm. uh, yeah. shreni shatru yeah right so these uh, shreni shatrus were slowly attacked eliminated sometimes the naxals did it sometimes even the communists did it they hmm. It, so this 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 had a history of how they social engineered the villages hmm. where they turned people against each other and they rewarded those who succeeded so this was a classic case of how you <clears throat> how you destroy a decently prosperous economy yeah using uh internal strife you cause you cause a problem where there necessarily isn't any Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Of course, there were poor people. There are poor people everywhere. Yeah. There are poorer people under the communist regime. Hmm. <clears throat> the communists love poor people so much that their numbers multiply whenever they are in power. Yeah. The point here is that they use these poor people, not necessarily always poor people. So there are there is literature to support the fact that sometimes they were given, uh, you know, they were given incentives to go and attack people. Yeah. and this kind of incentive structure was used by the communists to show that oh see there is a huge class war going on hmm. okay on the other hand electoral politics ke liye you have a large influx of refugees after the 71 war yeah so both of these factors come together and the congress has to rig the 72 elections to win hmm. the congress breaks into two in 1967 hmm. uh bangla congress comes to power with the help of the communists it's called jukta front united front government hmm. now this ajoy mukherjee 
was the chief minister um, of the shortest serving party in the history yeah. of Bengal, uh, Bangla Congress. The hmm. way in which uh, Congress's other offshoot will go uh, as well, actually. Hmm. So he made Jyoti Basu the police minister, if I'm not mistaken. I see. Okay, that was the like the biggest blunder in the history. Like Trump says, this is the worst deal in the history of deals in the whole world. Hmm. So Jyoti Basu is an ed- efficient administrator in the sense that he knows how administration works. Yeah. There's no doubt about it, no yeah. matter how much we hate him. Yeah. The fact is that Jyoti Basu effectively ends up controlling large chunks of the administration and 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 kind of slowly and surely turns them against uh, the state. Again, 72 May, when Congress comes, you have Runu Guho Niyogi and all uh, these people coming back and attacking the Naxals and whatever. But the fact is that the police machinery, the whole thing, this was heavily influenced by by the left by the 60s, by the mid-60s. Hmm. Now, Bangla Congress disappears into oblivion. It loses the 72 elections. Uh, United Front does not, is, is, is a failed uh, experiment. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what happens is... Uh, you know, Siddhartha Shankar Rai comes and he rules with an iron fist, uh, to put it short. What happens in 1975 is Indira Gandhi declares emergency. And yeah. Congress, if you remember, Congress lost a huge chunk of its power in 1977. Congress yeah. went to elections. Uh, leaders like Jagjivan Ram come out of the party, hmm. Congress party after emergency is removed and uh, Congress loses the election like anything. So all the regional parties that were fighting, like Lalu, Nitish, all these slowly come up, like the like the more regional caste-based parties in the north, the even the south, some of them are there. Uh, in Bengal, what it does unexpectedly is the communists gain almost total power. And hmm. uh, after 71, huge influx of refugees has happened. Hmm. So they have a vote base, they have an anti-incumbency. Siddhartha Shankar Rai had rigged the elections in 1972 badly. Hmm. There's a anti, there's a, you know, after the all the violence dies down, Naxalite thing appeals to people. Yeah. So what happens is, as the result of a national uh, crisis, if I can put it that way, there is a huge political change in the late 70s, like 1977. Hmm. <coughs> so, in 1977, once the more first democratically elected communist government comes to power, uh, they are working for the people. Hmm. So much did they work, they ended up killing half the people in Morijapi and all that. Hmm. So, they have been rigging and killing ever since. Yeah, And this becomes a kind of normalized as- affair in West Bengal. Hmm. So, how they do it? They don't necessarily always kill people. Okay. Hmm. What I I shall describe some methods by them. So what they used to do is they used to, um, sometimes they would, uh, you know, jam booths. So right. for example, there are voting booths and this is pre-EVM, right? Hmm. And uh, the situation is not so well controlled. And hmm. this is TN session as well. So TN session, I think, reformed the Bihar situation. And that's how we have such a good electoral mechanism. Thanks hmm. to that guy. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, boot jam, boot jam was a very common tactic. So, what yeah. they would do is, you went to vote. Let's say you and your family went out to vote, hmm. and you see that seven hundred people, two hundred people are standing in front of you. Yeah. So you stand there for an hour, two hmm. hours, three hours. The line is not moving. Actually, what happened is they put all their carders in the line. Yeah. And these people are not moving. Hmm. So, under under se kam ho Yeah. And you end up getting frustrated and you come back. Yeah. Okay. Or your uh, you decide to contest the election hmm. uh, in the panchayats and uh, somebody suddenly sends your wife a white cloth hmm. ki tum vidva ho hmm. uh, within the next few days. Yeah. So this kind of subtle digging is also there. Yeah. Let's not just like this is not just a uh, everyone out outright fighting a war. It's not always like that. Yeah, or, this even happened in 2012 in my college elections as well. The SFI candidates yeah, yeah, yeah. got just phone calls to their parents, not to them. Their parents yeah, got yeah, the call yeah, yeah. from TMCP people that, see, why are you sending your daughter to, to stand in elections? What if she doesn't return home tonight? <laughs> exactly. Just casual conversations. So, kaku, kaku, nobody ha their, ha gal. <laughs> exactly. Nobody in their right minds would fight against the fascists, right? Hmm. Uh, so what happens is that um, this becomes a highly normalized hmm. phenomenon yeah. in, in rural Bengal. Yeah. 
where again let's face one more fact the media the global media the local media the national media everyone is silent absolutely okay and i believe the media of the day whoever it was anand bazar and everyone who has suppressed events like mori chapi despite knowing all this hmm. despite knowing that the government openly ordered the killing of lower castes and uh, muslims and all these you know, oppressed classes in bengal quote and quote all these all these deaths are on their hands on the hands of the national you know media yeah uh, and the local media yeah. where there is absolute silence okay and there is also blood on the hands of academics like atul kohli who say that uh, who write books in the 90s saying that ah west bengal has the most stable regime because if you remember in the 90s and all there was political instability in almost every part of india hmm. but atul kohli writes books on political stability west bengal me kaise hota hai so political stability west bengal me kaise hota hai everyone like we yeah. know yeah. political stability is achieved but atul kohli and people like that who who uh, the the communist party and international like commune and all love him uh they so what they, is he a professor of political science why 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 the hell is political stability in an in, uh, implicitly a good thing it has to come at the cost of something or it has to get you some benefits mm-hmm. why is just objectively political stability a good thing no so this was used as an outlier like this was used as an argument for how bengal is an outlier to india oh okay. acha regional so, pride bengali Sa- pride ha sara jagah mein everyone's fighting with each other everyone's yeah, yeah. trying to kill each other I ram mandir ho raha hai ye ho raha hai wo ho raha hai hmm. bengal mein everyone's a communist okay yeah. this myth has been perpetrated by them yeah uh thanks to the fact that cpim stopped teaching people english <laughs> that the people stopped reading lenin so nobody knows what lenin and stalin actually wrote <laughs> so wo hota hai like you do something and it turns out ye ek baat mein jazbaat badal diya halat badal diya that kind of thing happens with the cpim yeah so anyway the cpim is doing all this it's rigging in a fancy way yeah. it's it's doing um you know a number of things uh, on the side like uh, if you're a professor or intellectual person who speaks against the communist party or uh, uh you know your your whole career is yeah, ruined yeah. uh, you are given a sexual harassment case you are yeah. if you are a man uh, yeah. f- a good example would be dr uh, mukherjee who had invented the test tube baby ka uh, thing the hmm. ivf thing that is so frequent now yeah. people said he would win the nobel prize yeah but he he was uh, murdered by the communist party i would say i see because they they murdered as in he was committed suicide and there was a I movie see. on this called ek doctor ki maut oh okay irfan khan was uh, there yes irfan khan was there um i think pankaj kapoor was the hero of the 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 protagonist of the movie okay anyway back when some leftists disagreed with the communist party and the communist party was gracious enough to accept that disagreement mm-hmm. anyway so um they changed the concept but the guy basically um he he would have gotten the nobel prize if if things didn't go wrong i see but the communist party ruined his image completely mm. and he was forced to commit suicide he was social boycotted mm. and this was a st- strategy they did everywhere so they would implement social boycotts of anyone they did not like they would yeah. uh, enter marital stra- so so this may not be a very common occurrence in the rest of the country but whenever a husband and wife fight mm. uh in bengal the local party gets involved the local political party comes and they will try to mitigate the problem yeah while they tell the husband the wife that oh you know file a fake dowry case against these people hmm. and they tell the husband oh you know we're with you okay hmm. and they totally destroy family after family they've done hmm. this yeah many people have committed suicide because of this yeah so normalize violence is normalized hmm. and in true bhadralok fashion This is all tucked under the carpet, and uh, Derida is invited for the book fair, Calcutta mm. book fair. Yeah, and Derida comes and uh, uh, marvels at democratically elected communism. Uh, okay, and uh, how beautiful their uh, ideas of uh, the uh, la revolution are working in in the Bengalis. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so all this uh, bhauta baji is going on on the side. Yeah. But. Um, slowly we approach 2000s the late 90s 2000s Aha, right the it revolution of bengal it revolution ho raha hai baki jagah yahan pe kuch aur hi ho raha hai so what happens is 
there was this dude um, really underrated dude in the communist party actually most people don't know about him okay onil vishash oh yeah i am today i am doing what putin did on tucker's uh, podcast basically i am recalling the history of bengal he yeah. did the history of russia yeah. anyway uh, so what happened is um, this um, so where was i yeah 2000s approach jyoti basu who is the till then the longest running chief minister uh, elected chief minister in india hmm. uh, they see that there is anti incumbency hmm. and uh, this uh, congress party is rising uh, hmm. really rapidly right hmm. so the thing is that what they do is um, the this is my theory again that they pay a section of the congress which they had already done by the way the congress as we have discussed earlier was called tormuj watermelon mm-hmm. bahar uh, hara andar lal mm-hmm. okay yeah so the communist party and the congress were ruling uh, side by side uh, having you know some understanding in some seats yeah so that's why the congress party never truly uh, you know displace the communists here yeah so what they do is they divide the congress into two mm. uh, this offshoot is called the trinamool congress in yeah. 1998 it is yeah. born a large number of congress leaders break away from congress and join and some congress leaders stay back so hmm. my theory is that this was engineered by the communists i see this was not engineered by some great feeling of oppression by the leading uh, you know forces back then is that possibly why after uh, mamta banerji became the cm she has she always seems to be very courteous about jyoti basu out of of all people who who beat her up so many times almost killed her yes. dragged her yes, around by yes, the yes. hair yes jyoti basu is her political mentor in more ways than one she had two political mentors primarily one is rajiv gandhi mm-hmm. who propelled her to a youth congress leader mm-hmm. the other is jyoti basu mm-hmm. now um so now the communist party needs a uh, new guy because jyoti basu has is facing anti incumbency tremendously and uh, they're like okay so what do we do so they take the then it minister information techno um, mm. uh, in, uh, information and technology minister yeah. jyoti uh, buddhadev bhattacharya mm. and they put him on in power yeah right Who, by the way months- one of the many reasons he had a great image was of course because he loved great bengali films and classical i mean art films etc but he was he had also resigned from the cpim cabinet yes calling everyone the thief he was the face they thought uh, like he he was he was the guy what they needed didn't deserve kya tha na wo dark knight wala he yeah. was the dark knight hmm. for the cpim yeah so but this was this was basically a ploy by uh, nirupam shen and um, all this that other lobby the younger lobby of the communists hmm. led by onil vishash now you have to hmm. understand onil vishash is one of the greatest political minds before shubhendu was a leader great hmm. leader ironically shubhendu rose right when onil vishash died okay so okay uh, onil vishash died in 2007 if i am not mistaken and right after that the cpim got crushed like anything yeah uh shubhendu rose and the tmc rose and now shubhendu will move into bjp anyway so onil vishash was the one of the greatest strategists political strategists who used state power to basically embed communists in every section of the government bureaucracy academia everything yeah so it was called oni lion yeah of the education the yeah. education system was made in the image of anil viswas hmm. and this man was a genius uh, he he to so the communist party may appear to be this fascist party that does whatever it wants but you have to understand why he's a genius because uh, he had to displace a number of people to come to the position he was in yeah so internally the it, it is more difficult to rise in the ranks of the communist party than yeah. it is in elections yeah. okay it is a very uh upper caste and very very well controlled party hmm. of any party in uh, the history of this country yeah one day even modi and amit shah's hegemony will end in the bjp hmm. but certain families like the karats and all their fa- their hegemony continues for decades hmm. okay uh you see the same guy is controlling the communist party since god knows when yeah. and only death can you know make them part from do them up the yeah <laughs> exactly so <clears throat> onil biswas um does this and 
you know basically um he he is able to convince people successfully as well that buddha babu is a new face he's totally has new ideas and which is true buddha babu said buddha babu was a bjp guy in the garb of cpim in in some ways so apart from the fact that he watched foreign films and loved uh, to go to nandan and uh, you know um uh, he was a you know cinephile and bu- uh, bibliophile and all that stuff apart mm. from all these tr- things mm. which made him acceptable to yeah, the yeah. Uh, uh the bengali elite yes. class more acceptable yeah and jyoti was who was uh, apart from that he was also a new liberal person so he famously went on interviews and said that you know if 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 capitalists don't give jobs jobs aayenge kahan se where mm. will you get jobs Hmm. even once in a public rally said that uh, madrasas produce terrorists hmm. which he had to he had to take back the statement hmm. uh, under uh, the party pressure hmm. but anyway the <clears throat> so this will tell you everything you need to know about the communist party yet again yeah. um so the communist party uh, is now ha- has a face change hmm. suddenly brand buddho becomes very stark brand buddho babu is like there are three chief ministers who are being talked about all over india Mm-hmm. Chandra Babu Naidu, Narendra Modi, and uh, yeah. Uddhav Thakre. Right. But turning around economies who are like uh, you know having meals with the Tatas and and bringing a ton of investment crores worth of investments and everything. Except mm-hmm. unlike Chandra Babu Naidu and Modi ji, his own party was against him. So yeah, uh, that actually even against Modi the party was against. But still by then I think the the because the BJP was out of power it didn't. Couldn't do much in Gujarat, and Modi had become an established brand and everything. And Modi wasn't But, being opposed in inside BJP for socialist reasons, right? That was just a no, anti-Modi faction. No, it was an ideological opposition. Yeah, exactly. For Buddha Babu, it was a ideological opposition as well as, uh, you see, the communists. So uh, one thing happened in the middle. Once Jyoti Basu, uh, and this is where I think India was lucky. Hmm. Jyoti Basu got the chance to be the prime minister in the nineties once. Mm-hmm. and the party refused the yeah. the the kerala lobby did not let him be the yeah. uh, prime minister now yeah. imagine if you were the prime minister my god yeah. uh anyway so i think we were lucky yeah. the country was lucky we yeah. weren't uh, so anyway so uh, the same thing happened with buddha babu that is my theory that buddha babu we came to and the same will happen with piniyari vijayan as well hmm. so whenever one leader rises above the party in the communist party like crabs they pull him down hmm. okay this is the nature of the communist party the communist yeah. party is full of oligarchs you have to understand that who do not like uh, anyone to prosper even their yeah. own party members yeah so this is why you will see sometimes they put good candidates in bad seats hmm. like shujan has been put in dum dum hmm. so uh, uh, although shujan would have uh, gotten a ton of votes in jadavpur uh, lok sabha seat Yeah. So they do this. They 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 try to damage your career before it takes off, or if the, your career does take off, they try to backstab you in a different way. Was that their problem with Rito Brato as well? Yeah, Rito Brato was kicked out because he had a mobla pen. Yeah, something yeah, something like that. Right, right. So, Shatrugh <laughs> has a twenty lakh card, by the way. Uh, but he, he toes the party line, so he's not a problem. Yeah, and people say that well, he got that money to buy that car by stealing all the money when he was the uh, Ashutosh College student president of the union. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the communist. So there is a there is a saying. Sometimes we we had this funny saying where, uh, why are communist party uh, officers right beside uh, a, a lake or a pond? because the capitalists and other uh, landed interest throw their money in the pond wrapped in plastic and they at night they fish it out with hooks so <laughs> this kind of thing like the communist party steals but it does not steal in the open electoral bond may be why case hai na the communist party acts like it does not take any electoral bonds but the truth is that it gets money from the dmk which mm. funds it in yeah. th- from tamil nadu mm. and the dmk gets funded by electoral bonds mm. so they they are very good at pointing fingers that's that's one thing i give to them they are very good at pointing fingers while they have destroyed everything that bengal is held dear here yeah. anyway so buddha babu comes to power he gets the sector 5 rajarhat this that everything tons of investment communists are slowly losing their edge over the electoral violence as well hmm. but i would still say so so in 2006 
Buddhabu decides to become a slightly democratic and has a proper election in 2006. Hmm. Mostly a proper election, although some people contest that notion. And the Communist Party gets the highest number of seats hmm. it has ever got. 235 out of 297. Hmm. So... Uh, Buddha Babu even famously said, Amra Dusho Poitri Shoda Poitrish. Yeah, it was okay. in the context for, for those of you who don't know. Uh, yeah. uh, a, a journalist had asked him that, what about their voices? They are they are saying that this factory should not happen, etc. So Buddha Babu, uh, which was considered to be very arrogant for some reason, he said that, yes. why should I listen to their opinion? <laughs> they just have 35 seats. We have to mandate up to 35 seats. We have to listen to those yes. people. And ye do tihai bahumat leke, uh, he's very happy. Hmm. In, in the words of Amit Shah, he is he is very happy, and he he um, he brand Buddha like is is a hit with, among people. Yeah. So people are finally getting cell phones. They're getting jobs. Uh, there's a hmm. promise of Ratan Tata coming. So things change yeah. slowly, and then the left create commits its second major blunder. That is, it 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 severs ties with the Congress hmm. in the central government. This is Manmohan Singh. Hmm. So, theek hai, wo to bat, bat uh, uh, the Manmohan Singh was saved by uh, SP, Mulayam Singh of all people anyway. Hmm. So, uh, Mulayam Singh comes in and saves Manmohan Singh's government and, and slowly what happens is, um, this uh, Buddha Babu uh, loses power in the party. The Kerala lobby becomes very strong. It was always stronger. They, they they told them that you know nuclear deal nahi chalega, let's get out of the Congress government and the Congress suddenly decides that okay now we gotta change these guys 34 years se ye log bahut, matlab, kar rahe, 30 years se. so now we've had enough let's uh, kick this guy out anyway and the other aspect is sorry 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 for interrupting just one bit let's go absolutely in depth and step by step in this what what was exactly cpim's problem with the nuclear deal was it just because usa is a bad uh, imperialist state or was there some china shenanigans in this what do you think i i'm not aware of the china aspect but hmm. it wouldn't be very surprising of course hmm. the official reason was that it was initiated by george bush hmm. and the american DS deep state. Okay. So the thing is that um, they they were always vehemently against the US. Hmm, yeah. That part is not that part is not surprising. Yeah. But what is surprising to me is how the Congress reacted. The Congress would typically give in to more leftist demands, but I guess the Congress. I think there was a need for developing economies in the world to develop more and stuff like that. Which is why the American deep state, I guess, invested heavily here. Something was there. Kuch to hai. And, and, and the ties broke hmm. between the Congress and the CPIM. Hmm. The official reason was that we can't shake hands with imperialists and capitalists. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, you are very good. So whom, who do, whom do you shake hands with? You, uh, so see, although I am, I am, I was in support of the Tata, uh, thing, the Tata factory and, the other, the Selim group uh, factory that was supposed to happen mm. in Nondigram. Mm. The fact is the CPIM did not, never procured land in the right way. Yeah. The Tata factory was not opposed by the, by the courts because the factory was illegal and all that. Yeah. The manner in which they took land, that was never democratically done. Mm. So there's a law of 1894 that was supposed to be deployed to acquire land for any public goods project or major industrial project in the in the country hmm. that law was misutilized by the cpm hmm. and the people of their their party they were told that you know we, you'll get higher compensation some of the other people were told you won't get any compensation hmm. and what happened is there were uh, the 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 communist uh, the the um, C, the tmc and the congress came together even the bjp came with the tmc by the way and they fought for the rights of the uh, the people who said that we don't want the factories. Hmm. Now these the lands the the problem was not the factory itself. The problem was the way in which they had acquired lands. Yeah. Okay. At that point, of now, course, that was that also should not have been a really big problem because everything was being done by the government illegally only. So why not do something great illegally? No. So here's the problem. Here's why Buddha Babu failed. Hmm. Uddho Babu did not stick a sucker punch into the opposition. Yeah. Okay. And that is where Jyoti Basu would have 
prospered. So mm. uh, there are many things happening here. So in the 2000s, for example, uh, there was Operation Sunshine in Calcutta, where they removed the hawkers in different parts yeah. of Calcutta. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that, and and then they were clearing various projects. Now, when when uh, and some of these were happening in the late 90s as well. So um, back then, the CPIM was more undemocratic, hmm. so to say. The CPIM used to basically, whenever there was opposition, they used to beat the hell out of the opposition. Yeah, they used to send them to police stations. Police did its job of hmm. doing third degree and whatever, hmm. and the opposition was taken care of. So the CPIM was ruling like more like the CCP or the USSR back then. Yeah, yeah. Post 2006, Buddha Babu thinks that the people are can be reasoned with, and uh, <laughs> the people are really of Bengal really love me. Yeah. Everyone loves me, and yeah. uh, so let's do something. Let's become democratic. Hmm. Communism never survives in a democracy, proper liberal democracy. You see, okay. see that is the problem with some people saying that Obisit Ganguly should be the uh, CM phase. That Buddhadev Bhattacharya was also such a face who had great credentials, etc., great reputation among the educated public, but he never had ground connection, which is why he did not know that Bengalis, most Bengalis in West Bengal, are absolutely fucking un- un- uneducated dumbasses. And yes. uh, he he st- he said even few years before going back to uh, going away from power, he said that. BJP in Bengal. B- Bengalis will vote for anyone, but not never BJP. Yes, and that although you know Buddha Babu was sasta BJP in his own right, like hmm. he, he tried to do Sarak Bijli Pani. He yeah, tried he tried to... to do the reforms, but without the ground connection, which is why he yes. didn't, he, he couldn't uh, execute it properly. Yeah. So the basic aspect here is that the Communist Party became democratic at the wrong time. When yeah. I say became democratic, it didn't become really democratic, but uh, it it stopped bashing the opposition too much. Yeah, and it suffered. So yeah. People of West Bengal love the person who wins the match. Okay, hmm. and there is a reason because, like I said, there is a high cost of not siding with goons. Mm-hmm. If you side with goons, your life becomes easier. Yeah. So what happens is the goons are now glorified in your mind. It's like it's 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 like a uske kya bolte hai na hostage situation mein they fall in love. Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, we have a collective Stockholm syndrome in West Bengal. Yeah, where the more violent a person is against you, hmm. the more you fall in love with that person. Yeah, no wonder our our love for uh, biryani and everything Islamic. Yeah, and everything that is completely antithetical to human rights. Like for example, um, if if we talk about the blatant abuse of human rights in Calcutta. Or in West Bengal, mm-hmm. uh, then uh, during political uh, elections and stuff, the people here will completely overlook that. Yeah, happening in the corner. They will say, "Hatras dekho, Manipur dekho." Are yes. Do you? It's like your house is burning, but you're pointing to the other house. Oh, I thought there was something going on there. Okay. Yeah. So people here are very. Um, they they have problems seeing reality, and this is not. This did not happen suddenly. This was created by the communists. Right. Hmm. So, uh, what happened as a result of this is the people here want a revolution, hmm. but the co- like I said, the cost of revolution is very high. Yeah. You could lose your life, you could lose your family, you could lose an arm or a leg, you could end up in a hospital, yeah. could end up homeless. They could just come destroy your house and go randomly. Yeah, yeah which fact, basically Trinomul uh, put up on steroids. That uh, up until Trinomul came to power, at least in in Kolkata proper. In the urban areas, yeah. you could not do yeah. random halla in the middle of the night, uh, drink alcohol randomly here and there, go yeah, around yeah, your yeah. bikes giving galis because yeah. some elderly gentleman from your own neighborhood will, will come down and slap you. If yes. even that yes. can't happen today in Bengal, you will you will die the next day or your daughter will get raped the next day. Exactly. And the problem with uh, the people here is that, you know, once you've, you've learned to accept and live in this manner, because you have to, right? You have to live. Yeah. Uh, it's it becomes very difficult to convince them that there can be a liberal free democracy or free market you cannot you cannot show them a reality beyond this it's where like like i said this is sasta north korea hmm. and um it it was it was basically then it was completely institutionalized in the minds of the people right the stockholm syndrome yeah um as a result what has happened is people here do not change their government unless the stakes are like met like so i will change the government 
only when I know that the people who are coming will benefit me materially and all that. So when you mm. deprive people of money and basic like human rights, benefits, houses, everything. So West Bengal, if I am not completely wrong, West Bengal has the highest number of uh, kacha houses in India. I see. Okay. Because every time there is even the slightest a problem in the weather you will notice that in the in southern bengal and other parts houses break okay mm. now these are not actual houses they are mm. huts mm -hmm. so whereas if you go to orissa which is much more prone to typhoons and all that stuff you will see that the orissa orissa mein itna problems nahi hota hai in terms okay. of electricity and uh, so one amphan basically ruined the electric supply here for quite a few days yeah we don't yet have uh, underground electric lines in many parts of the uh, state. Hmm. We have kacha houses in many rural parts. Okay. Yeah. We are completely at the mercy of the weather at this point. Yes, even in, even in Kolkata suburbs, wherever there's West Bengal State Electricity Board, if there's a five minutes of rain and uh, basically drizzles, the power will go out for yeah. one and a half or two hours because they are so afraid that everything will fall. Someone will get killed because of electricity, electrocution, etc. Exactly. So we're living in the 1950s okay yeah where you wanna that's why no wonder bollywood always shoots the vintage movies in these settings because they know that itna underdeveloped to hi nahi hoga. although i like that decor the colonial decor of calcutta but still it's it's <laughs> it's the way we haven't even maintained those Abhi sasta promoting ho hai. so yeah. basically what has happened is this has become embedded. So that's mm. why I'm saying. So now why are, am I saying that BJP will come to power? After no, no. Having... I have one more question about the 2006 era, which is yeah. that what happens in five years that in 2006, there is so much uh, support for CPIM. There's absolutely zero anti-incumbency. In five years, yeah. how do the how does the entire state get convinced that CPM is such a bad party? It's so evil and cruel for trying to build a, in, a factory where everyone will get jobs. How do people get convinced of this? Yeah, so that's where the external, uh, you know, uh, influences again come. Hmm. So suddenly, what you see is not just the fact that the opposition leader Mamata Banerjee is uh, blocking a road successfully, the Dugapur Highway and uh, sitting in esplanade for apparently what 23 day fast some people say she was having roshogolla's uh, underneath the stage hmm. anyway so she is successfully able to bring media attention number one so hmm. now uh, there is there are 24 hour media channels yeah. number one number two most of these media channels are beholden to the congress hmm. particularly abp ABP suddenly makes Mahmoud look like this guardian angel from, you know, heaven. Yeah. So ABP is focusing on her life, how she lives in a Talit Chal uh, mm -hmm. hut. A dilapidated hut. Poor immigrant, how she is like, uh, she wears the simplest clothes. She's Mother Teresa after Mother Teresa yeah. became like dead converter anyway. Yeah. So she, she wears clothes like Mother Teresa. Hmm. She uh, she is uh, she has pictures with the poor women who are crying at her feet and all that stuff. She and has those still pictures from the nineties getting beaten up by the CPM police. Getting beaten up, itna bada, itna bada bandage mana ki matlab mummy bhi bhag jayega all that stuff. So basically, um, she has that image uh, hmm. in the uh, in the media, hmm. which is now twenty four hours ka media, hmm. where she is seen as the winner. And now the under, underdog, think, potential winner, underdog, underdog hmm. under possible underdog, and Buddha was this evil um, hmm. dictator, right? Uh, that's fine. Now this is the media. Hmm. Okay. What also happens is a uh, few people who were in hibernation, mm -hmm. people like Joy Goswami, Oporna Shen, Kaushik Shen, uh, Miratun Nahar, uh, number of people to name. Hmm. Okay. Oporna Shen is He's... guys Ranvishor is ex mother-in-law. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't want to comment on their personal life, but anyway. Hmm. So the thing is, um, uh, Opornashen and all these great uh, intellectuals, right? They suddenly wake up from their 30 year hibernation hmm. and they remember, ah, CPIM is horrible. CPIM yeah. is fascist. Yeah. Jab CPIM Dalito ko tha, when CPIM was murdering people just for raising a different flag, when CPIM was jamming booths during elections when CPIM was literally raping and murdering women, uh, picking them up like 
कैंडीज इन अ स्टोर एंड डूइंग वॉट नॉट देन दे वुड स्टे साइलेंट सडनली इन टू थाउजेंड एंड सेवन दे लाइक समबड़ी रेड द बुक ऑफ द डेड टू डेम एंड लाइक इन द मामी मूवी दे जस्ट केम अप लाइक इम वॉट एप एंड वी वर्ड लाइक हो वंडरफुल दीज पीपल आर अगेंस्ट द गवर्नमेंट वाओ द गवर्नमेंट मज बी रियली इवल ओके सो मोस्ट पीपल वर कन्विंस्ड okay mm. and there was a lot of poems lot of uh, you know uh, uh, movies were coming out uh, short films were coming out these were being played on national channels national matlab jo etv bangla uh, and all these like yeah, drama theater like, everything all, all of us sudden took over in bashing cpim not communism yeah, but so but cpim yeah cpim became mainstream suddenly yeah and buddho babu instead of actually using his super powers like jyoti babu of of uh, you know uh, doing something against the opposition hmm. he suddenly decided to become gorbachev he was like glasnost and perestroika let's hmm. open shit up to wahi hota hai jo hota hai so buddha babu was attacked by naxalites once he he escaped narrowly yeah 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 coming from shalboni yeah uh, his convoy his, was attacked his convoy was attacked and he, he narrowly missed so so who is against buddha babu bhattacharya right. very strange there are actual naxalites maoists in the in the in the in the forests hmm mamata banerji is seen conversing with some of them yeah yeah i will not dignify what happens after that because i don't want you to get murdered anyway number 2 who who is pissed off at him his uh, one section of his party hmm. who doesn't want uh, west bengal to be developed mm-hmm. number 3 congress is pissed off at him Hmm. Okay, the uh, uh, Italian Mata Ji, who uh, Katrina Kaif has learned in Hindi, but she hasn't yet. So she is ang- angry at him. Hmm. Who else is angry? Uh, the you know people who wanted a nuclear power plant here and who are running the like who are running the free world. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. The Tony Blairs and George Bushes and all that. Now hmm. maybe they don't personally want him out of power. These hmm. leaders, but suddenly. the geopolitics of the entire world is not conducive to west bengal's uh industrialist ambitions yeah okay. even asfi started losing all all ground in all urban college elections at this time because yes. of the naxals the naxal yes. students had had black march against buddhadev bhattacharya even in 2005 yes even, and so then they got that, beaten up by asfi of course in ju yeah but but what what you see is that there is a there is a sudden like people who matter in bengal hmm. are suddenly against the chief minister yeah okay. how does that happen how do all of these people wake up all of a sudden at the same time like some some call for jihad went on wait <laughs> to somebody read the book of the dead to these people who read the book of the dead who funded the book of the dead ye ye to i leave to your imagination hmm. but suddenly but certainly it was not a force within bengal okay it was not a force within west bengal Okay, that much I am sure of. So it was a, it was a, a toolkit of those days. It was a days. national and global force, right? And so, if you yeah. if you also remember the com the Congress Party was in power back then. Hmm. Uh, this is well before it left, right? This is hmm. before two thousand and nine. Ka Lok Sabha election when Manmohan Singh won uh, a thumping majority hmm. in in the in the house. Yeah, and uh, this was. Before Modi ji came to power in yeah. 2014, much before that. So, yeah. what does the Congress do? It signs an MOU with the CCP hmm. around this time. So you yeah. see, there is a whole gang of people. There is a whole group of people ganging up, yeah, and hmm. against this one person with a few of his trusted friends. Hmm. And Anil Bishwas also dies in 2007. So yeah. you have you don't have a able administrator. The police stop listening to this guy. Yeah. So. Yeah. you you can understand that there are two parallel governments in west bengal something that hasn't happened in a long time that yeah. perhaps last was seen in uh, the naxalite uh, during the naxalite movement so yeah. there are parallel governments running in west bengal right and as usual when the parallel government runs uh, the primary government loses power yeah will stop responding to it and that's how so people of west bengal replaced what they saw as a weak leader Hmm. they did not replace a fascist because fascist ko replace karna hota to jyoti basu ko replace kar lete na hmm. they did not replace a fascist they replaced hmm. so this is the paradox of west bengal hmm. the they did not replace a fascist communist 
government. They replaced the most democratic avatar of the communist government. Yeah. The Gorbachev. Yeah. They put in power somebody closer to Putin or Stalin. Yeah. And this was also evident within a few months. The first few months of Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's re- regime, hmm. um, it became very evident that it would be more like a Stalinist regime than a than a Gorbachev regime. Or, it it or, actually or a... got proven even before Mahmoud Ahmadinejad came to power because many CPIM supporting <clears throat> villagers were getting kicked out of their homes by all of a sudden a mysterious new power and uh, yeah. claimed to be like Naxalites who socialist. were supporting yeah, Mahmoud. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the thing is that. um this so this is why i say that mamata banerji did not win the election hmm the uh, buddha babu lost the election right okay there is a big difference in hmm. the two and i am telling you this as well bjp will not win this election hmm the the tmc will lose this election hmm bad hmm there is a difference and the difference as you see jitna bhi regional pride ho jo bhi ho hmm the actors who who determine the fate of bengali politics in west bengal hmm. are all outsiders they are not bengalis i see it has always been the case this has this is not new hmm. so ye jo you know bjp's uh, bihari party or gujarati party hmm. and we determine our own fate hmm. um this this is a myth complete myth that i th- i think we are we have been able to bust in uh, the last maybe half an hour of our yeah. talk yeah so what i'm saying is that this time something is different mm. nothing is different per se mm. but if you think about it the situations are changing in a similar pattern as they did with buddha babu and all these uh, you know other cases that we discussed so what yeah. happens is the ruling elite becomes boring mm. exactly uh, to the people the, they are they have nothing new to offer kitni bar bologe ki yaar bangla 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 aur khud yusuf patan aur shatrughan sinha ko ticket dobe so i mean that doesn't make sense to a lot of people right hmm. your half your ministers big ministers are in jail hmm. so you are weak now yeah. you see what the parallel this is not a parallel of the way buddha we can democratic hmm. this is a parallel of the way because mamata banerji managed to slap him hard in 2007 so he fell hmm. in the eyes of the common people yeah abhi same shit bjp has managed to slap her hmm. bjp high court dono milke hmm. they have slapped some sense into her ki bhai yeah. tum kya kar rahe ho finally somebody puts half of their people in jail yeah so this perception of weakness is hmm. what has become evident in the tmc hmm. for the tmc among the people yeah the people are like are ye to she can't even protect her own party members how will she protect us protection yeah. matlab wohi jo gunda wala protection matlab yeah it's not it's it's the way you you remember godfather if you godfather part 2 where um they had to pay hafta vasuli to hafta to some dude in um you know some don in new york right mm. so mm. that guy you even don corleone said i am giving you protection yeah. protection kis se tum hi to pitoge bhai Yes. so the the same logic works that mm. if she is unable to protect her own party her yeah. own ministers yeah. then how will she protect but uh, you us? see she still gives the impression of of her being standing by the side of her uh, people in the way that she is still fielding mohua moitro she is still fielding uh, candidates who are who are accused of uh, hurting hindu sentiments नहीं इसमें एक अलग यू नो दैट दैट दिस इज व्हाई आई आई रियली लाइक हर इन सम वेज सो देयर इज देयर आर सम डील्स हैपनिंग व्हाट आर दीस डील्स मोहुआ मोइत्रो इज एसेंशियली अ कांग्रेस कैंडिडेट शी हैज शी यूज्ड टू अर्लियर वर्क इन द कांग्रेस नाउ कांग्रेस तो है नहीं सो शी जॉइन द टीएमसी कांग्रेस है नहीं मतलब इन वेस्ट बंगाल इट्स नॉट देयर पर से एक्सेप्ट टू सीट्स या सो अ that was a com- she was a compromise candidate between the shashi tharur lobby shashi tharur and the yeah. intellectual lobby of the congress yeah and the tmc here so she yeah. did two things first go to lok sabha talk in english mm-hmm. and talk about kya uh, she did fascism hoga india mein kya kya whatever she yeah. said and it doesn't uh, you know you're you're ruling bengal and you're talking about fascism in in the country that's that's irony did nrc and deported itself out of this country that day anyway so the thing is that um she does all that with her two lakh gucci bag and stolen yeah. dogs and what not hmm. now the thing is 
she is a Congress candidate, hmm. and Mamata has no choice but to not field. I her. see. That same reason she has fielded Yusuf Pathan to make hmm. Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary win. I see. Okay, these are deals with the Congress, I which see. she does. So she says, "I won't align with the Congress," hmm. but these are, you know, deals with the Congress. Also, there are deals with the BJP. Okay, is it is BJP. it deliberate or is it like unspoken that haha <laughs> you see you see get what i'm doing here ha ah, unspoken karke fir baat hota hai matlab i my theory is that she plays these moves hmm. which harms her own party particularly hmm. this lok sabha election if you look at the candidate list hmm. it's a joke okay um whenever bjp has strong candidates tmc hmm. has fielded very weak candidates hmm. okay whenever strong, congress is right. strong he has fielded extremely weak candidates hmm. okay so this is very strange hmm. right uh, now this is not actually strange if you know how she works hmm. because the tmc walked out during the N- nrc uh, ca vote hmm. it could not yeah. vote for ca yeah but it walked out yeah it walked out during the abrogation of kashmir uh, 370 yeah it it uh, voted for dhankar to be the vice president yeah so you see the tmc Does these underhanded deals and this is a message? Whether this, whether she actually calls uh, Amit Shah and says that, "Arey, Dada, dekhu ne tu more ya chhi," or uh, you know, whether it's a message that, okay, you know, uh, more scored, right? Hmm. Uh, yeah, between yeah. us, that I'm going to sabotage my own party sometimes. Hmm. And you know, and the thing is, because the BJP is the opposition, hmm. the global forces are not against her, so she has that advantage. Yeah, the, the, she has so much electoral bonds as well. Electoral bonds, hai, and the biggest aspect that the biggest asset she has hmm. is actually the urban Naxals. Exactly. The urban Naxals will still not speak against her. Still yes, not. Absolutely. Despite Sandesh Khali, despite the corruption, despite the job seekers sitting for one thousand days and all that. Hmm. the they will still not speak against her Nobody yeah that wonders. was actually my next question that the only difference today we have in our political situation from the 2008 9 era is that the intellectuals are still not coming out in in if, against this this government that's because if they do come out people will vote for bjp hmm at least yeah. they think they are powerful enough to impact people's vote anymore yeah so the difference between 24 hour media where the media set the agenda hmm and social media is the social media does not uh, the the people set their own agenda yeah the people give likes and views on their you know whom they feel is fair yeah in 2007 and 8 this hmm. was not the case yeah. babu did not have complete control over the media hmm. now mohita banerjee exercises humongous control over the media humongous yeah. never yeah. heard of before hmm. but people are not even you know uh, people are not even interested in what the traditional media has to say hmm anondo bazar circulation has fallen by a few lakhs in the last few years okay people talk people openly call these media choti chata media people I, who yeah, make yeah. mouth to speak yeah okay openly hmm. um people openly go on the facebook page and uh, youtube pages of these um, big large media houses like hmm. abp and uh, 24 ghanta and all and they openly abuse the anchors they say are go to pa- bangladesh go to pakistan right right you yeah. guys are cpim and tmc stooges people openly yeah, yeah. say all this yeah this is the power of social media now do you wonder why the cpim destroyed computers in the 90s <laughs> they knew that once people will see what was what... their reasoning their reasoning was this will take away jobs of oh. are hai hi nahi jobs how do they get taken away <laughs> are jitne hai two jobs were there na which were yeah, that's that's probably another started. reason why it, uh, the intellectuals are still not going against you know mul that whatever jobs are left in tollywood even if the biggest budget movie is just a 1.5 crore movie even that will go away or our yeah, yeah, yeah. jobs so, will go so, away so uh, so tollyganj is completely under their control something that even buddha babu did not do hmm. okay jyoti babu also did not do it to that extent to okay. that extent i see okay he did it they did it i mean communists always control uh, the you know propaganda vehicles right but yeah. even they did not completely destroy the like for example victor banerji right victor mm-hmm. banerji was a candidate for bjp back when nobody knew what the party was in west bengal if i am not mistaken 1990 lok sabha victor banerji contested as a um, uh, candidate i see but victor yeah. banerji did quite a few movies after that yeah 
Hmm. But right, right now, right. it is unimaginable if somebody contests as a BJP candidate, somebody yeah. like Hiron, somebody like Rudronil, yeah. they yeah. will get a movie in Tollyganj. They will not. Yeah, only Sravanti Chatterjee has been able to beat that because she probably Sravanti the most beautiful woman in the history Sravanti, of Bengal. Sravanti, nobody, I, I don't think anyone takes her seriously. <laughs> but look at the people like, um, you know, Rudronil Ghosh and Hiron and all these people who have been uh, working with the BJP, Anjana Boshu and all these people. Yeah. Their careers are over. Locket Chatterjee. They don't get any movies. They get yeah. C grade uh, movies by some washed out BJP guy or somebody. Even Pyle or... gets only Hoi Choi series, not not movies anymore. She was a yeah big yeah. yeah. In so movies. their careers are over. Their hmm. careers are all. For Parnomitra, she's her career is dead. Everyone's dead. Yeah. So so this level of control, even the CPM did because the CPM knew one thing. The CPM knew that. So first thing is BJP was not a humongous threat to the CPM. Because the CPM hmm. knew, had some confidence that Hindu to come to the Hindu to come to the Hindu. Yeah. Okay. They thought they would have a thousand year Reich like Hitler. Okay. Hmm. So, anyway, yeah. good day, good old times. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, they were like, Victor Banerjee is not really a threat. Hindu to come to the There are no Hindus in Bengal. So, Hindu to come to the Hindu to come to the Hindu. So they did not take Hindutva as a threat. Yeah. And even course. then they, they let some opposition survive in the form of Congress, TMC. They let them survive. Yeah, that they controlled not... opposition was of course very stark. Which one? Controlled opposition thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So CPIM knew that best thing is you tell your opposition leaders have uh Mangshobhat and just sit just snore all day. Okay. Mm. That's what they did. They gave them some seats. Mm. Okay. Some you will notice that. Some of the biggest Congress leaders and the TMC leaders, biggest ones, not hmm. the medium or lower level guys, they never had a very strong candidate against them in elections. Yeah. CPIM always fielded the worst candidates against these guys. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And the thing is, Jay, it's it's very uh, interesting how they that's why they were able to rule for 34 years. Hmm. If you destroy every ounce of opposition yeah somewhere a counter opposition will rise which will destroy you yeah eventually yeah but they were clever enough not to cross that line which yeah. the C tmc has so that's another reason because the tmc controls every panchayat every municipality every avenue of income in the hmm. state hmm. so these are forget so the biggest part of politics that in west bengal that people don't understand because there are no um there are no traditional industries left in this country in this state yeah there are no actual industries hmm. people rely heavily on panchayat and municipalities and uh, vidhan sabha for earning money right the elections are to earn money they are not hmm. so you will notice nowadays they have utshop for everything they have one cake utshop they have they are celebrating everyone's birthday yeah, okay. yeah. they are celebrating random stuff like oh my dog uh, it ate, ate some food, whatever. Mm -hmm. TMC mm -hmm. leaders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the thing is that it's it's very uh, interesting that these people mm -hmm. um, are doing this because what you have to understand every time there is some kind of a construction, mm -hmm. some kind of a party, yeah, yeah. party in the sense uh, party karte hai, that kind mm -hmm. of party, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, some kind of celebration, some kind of jointi, some kind of anything. Hmm. There are lakhs and crores of rupees that are handed over to scudders. Right. Okay. And that's how they earn money yeah. in the state. Now, interestingly, a large part of this patronage by the party is done through government funds. Okay. okay. And that's how your taxpayers' money is being rerouted on onto the into the party. Yeah, yeah. So somebody says Mamata Manaji does not take any um uh kya bolte, any 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 fee from hmm. any any uh compensation from the government. Okay. How does she survive then? How does she have the latest iPhones and everything? Because when she writes a book of poems, hmm. yeah, that is the Saitya Academy <laughs> Awards. Okay. Now I won't go into the quality of poems, otherwise we'll both get murdered. Yeah. Now what happens is she wins the Saitya Academy hmm. and all her books are kept in every public library of West Bengal. Yeah. And there are many public libraries, college, school, uh, random public libraries that are there, etc. that are funded by the government. Yeah. Now these procured books, 
now every book is at least 700 800 bucks okay now there is a profit of at least 3 to 400 rupees there is a royalty cost right now imagine if there are thousands and thousands and thousands of copies of books great books being bought guys in guys your... google who is the library minister of west bengal okay <laughs> ये तो अलग ही मतलब ये तो प्रैंक हो गया हमारे साथ सो बट यू नो यू कॉन्ट ब्लेम देम इफ द फर्स्ट एजुकेशन मिनिस्टर वॉज मोलाना अब्दुल कलाम आजाद ऑफ इंडिया सो यू नो इट्स 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 नॉट यू यू कॉन्ट ब्लेम देम फॉर पुटिंग सिद्दीकुल्ला हु इज द लीडर ऑफ जमाते जमाते हिंद इस्लामी इन वेस्ट बेंगाल एज द लाइब्रेरी मिनिस्टर ओके ये यू कॉन्ट ब्लेम हर I yeah, will not take. That's true. Anyway, uh, uh, Professor, so, we have one of uh, uh, that that uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. super chat question here. So I'm taking it. I'll yeah, might forget it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, He's no, asking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in 2018 at Nodia District, one man said to me, uh, "Bengali manush bishon buddhi man. Muslim speak in Bengali. He he near us. If Hindi uh, speak Hindi, not our part. Uh, I guess some typos are here, but I don't know exactly what he means. Uh, did you get the question?" Uh, I'm reading the question as we speak okay. on my phone. Uh, Bengali manush bishon buddhi man. Uh, he near us if Hindi. Okay, in a sense that um, I don't know if this is an ironic uh, question. Okay, in the yeah. sense that uh, B- Bengalis are very clever. So if somebody, if Muslims speak to us in Bengali, hmm. we think they are our own. Yeah. If if um hindi if hindi speaking hindus come to us yeah. then they are not our own so yeah. i don't know if this is ironically stated or uh, whether this is actually something that person believes no no it's ironic if it's ironic i can tell you somewhere there can be a um yeah if it's somebody saying he is being sarcastic yeah. now i think that yes because i'll tell you something in mm. the villages this kind of bangla pokko thing does not exist much right in villages there are, there is a greater acceptance of bharatiya identity absolutely and some people even say hindi is the national language whether it is or not i am not getting into that debate hmm. yeah some lay people in 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 villages hmm. they will say they have said to me that hindi is the national language yeah because okay. learning hindi for them is like learning yeah. english and farsi for raja ramon roy usko yes. tum hindi nahi yes. sikhne dogoge raja ramon roy farsi janta tha kitna badhiya baat hai exactly so the point is that um, people in the villages are aware and he's talking about nadia district hmm. uh, right yeah so uh, people are aware that uh, there is something going on hmm. that the hmm. this kind of gorgo chatterjee thing hmm. is not working outside calcutta they don't care people don't really necessarily think like that yeah. okay that's my point and since um, everyone has relatives in every state in india they know that they'll yeah. have to end up speaking marathi and kannada when they give, go for their jobs yeah they don't have jobs in west bengal yeah. so if they end up settling in let's say even odisha right. their children the next generation will be learning odia they won't yeah. learn bengali anymore yeah so that is here here's how what people think about uh, you know Beng- bengali pride okay right so uh, kanglu pokkho can go you know whatever okay okay now the thing is yeah i i did not uh, complete that <laughs> sentence for a reason anyway so the point is that it does not this regional identity hmm. appeals primarily to very unnecessarily proud uh, urban upper caste bang- bongs yeah it does not appeal to the lower castes like mutuas and all it does not appeal to tribals hmm. because they have seen the decadence of the bengali bhadra lok over the years yeah You and also the the bengali they speak they if they wrote it in their exam papers they would get zero in in bengali language papers mm-hmm. their bengali is not even accepted as bengali exactly so the thing is um you you have to understand that this this kind of what we think of as regional pride what we think of as you know a uh, uh, excessive Uh, regionalism and 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 pride in our language and culture that doesn't exist in on the ground that is a very um, artificial creation of social media and uh, uh, you know uh, mainstream media yeah okay you really think in a state where nowadays they're doing londia nach like bihar right you really think they have anything left of that rabindrik uh, cultural 
pheno- epiphenomenon that no it's that not thing. just that we have londia nach now the thing is that actually the wo- that bihar orchestra thing half of their uh, women are supplied from bengal only even their anchors are yeah. from bengal i had an anchor friend long time back when i was working in an office she has done so many londia nach uh, she do- has not danced herself she used to be the anchor in those uh, shows okay and exactly. secondly rubinonath was not even appreciated for his intellect really in bengal he was their religion he was their deity they bengalis did not have actual religion so they replaced the dogma with with rubinonath sangeet which is why yeah, yeah, my yeah. my friend who used to wear sleeveless and a bandana he got scolded on live television for wearing for for wearing those things and singing rubinonath sangeet it was never yeah, about yeah, yeah, music yeah. and appreciation for art for bengalis exactly it was a very patriarchal bengal is the most patriarchal uh state in my opinion precisely where the cpim at one time uh banned ushauthup songs hmm. because they called it oposhongshriti hmm. it was low culture hmm. right and these are the same people who will say oh dalit ko hum kitna pyar karte hain and all that stuff yeah. this is this is a complete hypocrisy yeah, on that when, part when anyway, all of a sudden we were the first generation of rock musicians all of a sudden we gotten called the, that so, kind of anti nationals okay all of a sudden out of the blue yeah. rock music was the only anti indian thing everything else they were doing was very indian as fuck yes 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 and 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 this kind of these hypocrisies exist in bengal so to understand why the bjp will finally be coming to power here we must understand that you know there is um so the the bjp had a uh, so somebody is asking whether you know there's a fixed match between bjp tmc yeah. ha there many, is, many there bjp supporters also believe this no no there was a fixed match <laughs> ye to pata hi chalta hai from the rajya sabha voting patterns and all hmm. see the bjp needs its laws passed in the rajya sabha hmm. and the tmc needs to hold on to power here yeah. ye setting ka game is old like hmm. i said the tormuj analogy right like the congress would rule the center hmm. some of their leaders would rule here as mlas and mps hmm. but the cpim would rule west bengal the congress would never disturb the cpim till 2007 yeah this thing has always happened in west bengal that is why i say there is no regional aspect to bengali politics it's all hmm. controlled at the national level yeah okay now what has happened is the bjp is a shark the bjp mm-hmm. is not a the adwani atal ji bjp right and it's anyway. not buddhadev bhattacharya it's definitely not buddhadev bhattacharya mm. it's being led by shubhendu adhikari yeah shubhendu adhikari was the now why i rely on shubhendu adhikari much more than obhijit ganguly is shubhendu mm. adhikari was able to defeat lakhon shet yeah in 2006 cpm ka ekdam height of its power yeah. okay shubhendu adhikari defeated lakhon shet lakhon shet was called choto mukhyamantri mm. the the small cm of mm. uh, midnapur Yeah. He ruled Midnapur like some feudal lord. Okay. Yeah. Shubhendu managed to democratically defeat him. Yeah. Right. Now, the thing is that uh, Shubhendu is a very ambitious leader. Mm. There is no doubt about that fact. Mm. Uh, he has now realized, and this was always the case. Mohan Banerjee never tolerates any kind of opposition within the party. I see. So she may, she knew that uh, Shubhroto Mukherjee. uh was the most effective uh, uh mayor that calcutta ever saw hmm. now subroto mukherji was made the panchayat mantri nobody cares in west bengal about the panchayat mantri okay? hmm. nobody does so she relegated him to a second secondary position just so that then like if she made him an administrator hmm. he would become more powerful than her she yeah. made him like the biggest administrator hmm. okay and recently he died yeah now he died under kind of mysterious circumstance i will not go into that hmm. okay um now the thing is that shubhendu is someone she knew was a threat to her authority yeah no wonder the Why? allegations of the alkali as well. uh, alchemist yeah. alchemist and narada case no no that to somebody did some great man uh, near uh, diamond harbor did anyway i i will not go into that but i'll tell you what shubhendu adhikari did this is according to pranam mukherjee's um, pranam mukherjee was opposed by mamata banerji by the way pranam okay. mukherjee who helped mamata to come to power hmm. was opposed by her when he was announced as the presidential candidate okay hmm. back then shomen mitra and shubhendu adhikari had vowed to get him into as the president this yeah. was in the early years of tmc this was yeah. 2013 or 11 or something like that yeah. okay 
uh, right before this is right before Narendra Modi came to power. Hmm. Okay. So the Shubhendu and Shomen Mitra lobby, they got together and they wanted to vote for Pranam Mukherjee. Hmm. They actually did vote for him. Yeah. Against oh. Mamata's way. The last moment my Mamata knew that there would be a rebellion in the party. Hmm. And because Shubhendu would be rebelling, hmm. uh, she knew that this could break the party in two. So she decided to compromise. Okay. But then she introduces a certain person in the party who is suddenly given a parallel post to Shubhendu Adhikari. Hmm. And he becomes the next possible CM candidate of TMC. Yeah. Now, Shubhendu Adhikari knows that he will never be the, you know, uh, uh, CM while Mamata Banerjee is there. Hmm. Yeah. So eventually, he does slowly, slowly. So she pulls him away from us. He was an MP. Hmm. So she made him a minister in the state. Yeah. She brought him back into the state. Like, she, I guess, watched Godfather 2 and said that keep your enemies closer. <laughs> keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. Yeah. So that's how it played. And Shubhendu Adhikari is a brilliant manager of the media. Hmm. Like I said, he has defeated not only Mamata Banerjee in a popular election, he has defeated uh, Choto Mukhamantri Lokkhan Shet during the height of CPM's power. Yeah. So he is a brilliant uh, electoral strategist. Yeah. He knows West Bengal really well. He knows yeah. it better than any politician alive right now in, hmm. in, in India. Yeah. Absolutely. He will be able to become, you know, um, the chief minister effectively if the center does, if the BJP does really well in the Lok Sabha, which is mm. going to happen. Yes. Because simply also because of the kind of candidates Mamata Manaji has fielded, which are mm. uh, very weak candidates, very mm. weak candidates in many seats. Mm. So, as you know, that this is kind of an equation where she's like, you know, maybe you can save my family from the ED and CBI if I can demolish my own party in front of you. Hmm. This is probably that kind of an equation. Yeah. So this will, what will help the BJP come to power, uh, you know, within a few, I, I believe in a few months. Hmm. So uh, officially in the state. I so see. that's my view of yeah. this whole situation. I have uh, one thing to ask here, which is uh, w something is uh, something of this sort is said by a lot of BJP supporters these days as well. Now that their their uh, folks are in power, everyone now thinks that uh, see this is why democracy is a problem. Now I have always and and let's increase more powers and more authority of the government and and make the government do everything. Make the make sure the sarkar ye karna chahiye, wo karna chahiye. And I have always said to them that what what is going to happen to you the day these guys go out of power? You think they are never going to go out of power? What then? What is that power going to be like in the hands of a bad person? So. My question is, since uh, Mamta Banerjee had such authority, just as the same as CPIM had the authority over uh, the uh, uh, candidates and election, everything, law and order, police, everything. But of course, they were communists. Therefore, they did not do a particular uh, set of things. Why didn't Mamta Banerjee do anything good? And b because this is associated with my other question, which is something brought up by uh, Trinamool people these days, which was kind of brought up by CPM supporters during the end of CPM that, see, at least we did hold, hold the petrochemical. Now, Trinamool people say that, see, we built so many roads in villages which were not there in 2011, which is actually true. I used to ride uh, ride around my motorcycle all across West Bengal, Jharkhand, and I knew a, a lot of roads in West Bengal villages were like MotoGP roads, but they survived only for yeah. six, seven months. Of course, that's a different matter. But those places yeah, did yeah, not yeah, have yeah. roads. So is that development a great justification or apologia? And uh, why why didn't Mamta Banerjee turn around Bengal? What was her problem? Because she was not a communist. Um, so there is a thing that there, there, there is a factor here. Uh, the organized mafias of the state, right. be it rice mafia, Hmm. There is a rice mafia. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Koela mafia, sand mafia, building mafia, education mafia. Uh, all these mafia are operating. Hmm. So, if you remember, there was a scene from the movie Nayak. Hmm. Okay. Uh, where the uh, chief minister, there's a riot going on, and the police yeah. calls the chief minister and he says that, Are, mera gaddi khara hai, teen char paiya koi Right. Okay. Now, her whole regime is running on these people. Hmm. Okay. Right. So, do you think that if somebody is stealing all the resources of the state, hmm. that 
uh, the state will ever really have any kind of development. And no. you can't no stop them from stealing because these people are extremely powerful. These are regional leaders. So one would think that Mahatma has overarching power over her party. That's not true. They are little That's CMs. Yeah. They are little CMs, like uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They are little kings, okay. And that's how Sheikh Shahjan was born. He was yeah. not born overnight. Of course, the CPIM, he, he worked for the CPIM for many yeah. years. That is the other aspect that whenever you pull some scam, some murder, something, if you start pulling at the thread, CPIM will come out. It's like a yeah. inevitable. Yeah. Anything wrong with West Bengal, the CPIM is to blame. I'm sorry, that's just a fact of life now. Hmm. But Mamata Banerjee never could do anything because hmm. the people she aligned herself with, right? Look hmm. at how she came to power. She um, there are there are still photos of her with certain Maoist leaders. Hmm. Now you think these people really want a, a capitalist and free market development here? Hmm. You think that the interest that she serves, they want the people of West Bengal to have a democratic and free market kind of orientation or, or an existence. Hmm. These are highly powerful people. Yeah. On top of that, the communist elites who worked uh, for 34 years hmm. under the communist regime, they were really well fed by her. They She gave them the top most posts in the best universities and the best colleges and the best places. And they were, they have been given the best positions in every aspect of our lives. Hmm. So you will notice that these people will not want to disturb her at all. Yeah. And this status quo happens at a cost. So you if you give your if you give communist cutters job, then the rest of us don't get jobs. Hmm. If you give, um, uh, you know, the mafia people a, a, a kind of free hand in stealing money, hmm. and uh, don't let the police work, then you get corruption at every level. Yeah, and that's how this state has gone to the dogs. Even even worse than it, way worse than it used to be. Yeah, under Babu. So this is not some surprising aspect. This yeah. is just this was just bound to happen. Yeah, and so the extreme we... power being concentrated in one person uh, with federal structure. Now this is where federal structure is a problem in India. Mm. In my opinion, mm. federal structure ka pe hota hai, where the people have guns, people have ability to protect themselves from the state violence right yeah. so if the state goes rogue yeah you are able to protect yourself if mm. you can't protect yourself when the state goes rogue mm. then federal structure does not make sense yeah america nahi hai. okay yeah. that is why um federal structure should not be implemented in india at least from a law and order perspective mm. police should be centralized west bengal and kerala particularly west bengal uh, bihar even till the 1990s the these are all examples of why these are all cases against federalism yeah these should be lined up the events here how police basically worked as ruling party cadres should be completely you know documented and then presented to the supreme court and parliament and said that by federalism nahi chalta hai hmm. basic law and order is not here how can you have how can the police be given to a, a bunch of goons and criminals yeah this is my strongest i think west bengal makes the strongest case against federalism against like there must be a unitary way in which for when where elections are conducted by the central election commission something similar must be done for the police mm -hmm. otherwise if the moment this uh, you know some maybe bjp comes and they are better hopefully hmm. if they are not better then what can we do again there's a cycle how how much do you think is going to get better with bjp coming to power because this has been my uh, claim since ever since the time i started this channel that nothing drastic is really going to change or nothing drastic amounts of investment is not going to come in the first at least two three years because we have a gigantic critical mass of political goons who were goons in the Congress era, whose sons became the goons in the CPIM era, whose sons became the goons in the pol in the Trinamool era, whose sons are now becoming goons in the Trinamool era as well because they see becoming a political gunda as an aspirational model if they are in a lower middle class family in the suburbs or in the villages because let's say their parents, even if they are not gundas, they are probably a hardworking farmer or a hardworking rickshaw puller 
whereas the kid is hanging out with some local political gunda and one fine morning that that political gunda who whose father also belongs to the same economic strata but he all of a sudden j- joins their hangout in a duke 200 wearing rich uh, we- wearing great costly watches and stuff so why wouldn't that kid become a political gunda so what are their professions going to become when shubhendu dikari turns the cm now i have two views about this hmm. one is that because the government is so used to using the police to control everything hmm. that perhaps there is a way in which the income the next incumbent will be able to control this situation with the police yeah because yogi did do it to a large extent yeah so when the police is super powerful mm-hmm. uh, then you you have a way to use the police against the goons that mm. is one hopeful scenario mm. the second scenario is these are these people are tamed like you tame a lion mm. you don't tell the lion to be, not be a lion mm. you tell the lion to stop eating less you put it in a cage sometimes yeah, take yeah. it out occasionally right. something like that right so you could tame these lions yeah. that that could happen mm. the other aspect i am hopeful about is bengal has always like i said the national media is responsible for most deaths in west bengal because they didn't cover these deaths mm. they didn't expose them when they were happening the number of murders the 50000 uh, murders that have been recorded uh, mm. in the communist era yeah. and the roughly uh, at least i think a few thousand in the tmc era mm. um these murders were allowed to happen for yeah. years by the media but something changed like in tripura you will notice tripura yeah. first nobody could even point on a map hmm. in india yeah nobody knew where tripura was yeah iron curtain what churchill used i think the phrase iron curtain to describe the ussr hmm. so whenever there is a communist government the media is very strangely oblivious of that place nobody hmm. knows what what that place is yeah kya ho raha hai kuch nahi pata hmm. but the moment the you know the iron the bjp comes to power the media hmm. is suddenly over interested in what is happening in the state hmm. yeah okay This and, is uh, this is the best the best anecdote for this is Tripura. Yeah. Suddenly people are interested in what the Tripura CM is saying. Hmm. Suddenly people are interested in what where the tribals are going to go in Tripura. Oh my God! Yeah. इतने सालों से tribal कहाँ थे Tripura में? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. suddenly people are very concerned about minorities in Tripura. Yeah. हाँ. इतने सालों से West Bengal में interested नहीं थे. Yeah. Suddenly you will notice once the government changes that yeah. the media will. really like they'll park 50 car vans here and uh, like talk to everyone can you feel the fascism can you feel the fascism okay yeah. uh, that will happen that mm. and i think that's good that's a good thing mm. because uh, not necessarily always but that's a decent thing to happen because mm. i think it will bring out a lot of skeletons mm. that we have hidden in our bhadralok closet okay yeah it will it will it will expose a lot of realities of bengal that that people out, outside the state do not know about Hmm. I, people I, might yeah yeah people might Go say on. that it was way worse before yeah i'm waiting for that to happen and i i i think that will uh, slap most of the uh, academics and media who stopped looking at bengal hmm. uh, in the last four decades yeah now this reminds me that uh, which i had uh, told you one day when we met that i had a conversation with a with a semi commie friend of mine who basically now identifies as a renaissance era uh, thinker uh, so uh, i had asked him this when i was not a commie anymore economically because uh, because i had uh, come under the uh, influence of thomas sowell and stuff but i hadn't read the sanjeev sanyal book so i was not very pro hindutva but just based on the logical thinking that suddenly was born in my mind because of uh, thomas sowell was that uh, he was very uh, critical of uh, bjp he was uh, dreading the fact that bjp will someday come to power in bengal uh, he was saying that he is now going to uh, become a trinamool voter although he has been a cpm voter uh, all his life he he hated trinamool forever but now trinamool is uh, going to be at least better than bjp that's therefore he'll vote for trinamool so i asked him that what do you think is the worst thing that's going to happen because of bjp come to power let's say riots will happen and uh, so muslims will die uh, here and there everywhere randomly because bjp is coming to power and why is that different from trinamool coming to power and cpm workers getting killed or cpm coming to power trinamool workers getting killed anywhere everywhere political deaths are going on anyway why is objectively muslims getting killed because of bjp coming to power an objectively worst thing 
he did not under answer the why but he said that yes that is an objectively worse thing even if the numbers are less even if two muslims get killed because of bjp coming to power it's objectively worse than 50 communists getting killed because of trinamool come to, coming to power <laughs> this is this is uh, you know this is very interesting so i think at the core of their hearts the upper caste bengali bhadra looks are really scared of the lower caste of west bengal yeah that so, that friend was also a brahmin yeah so i can i can tell you uh, the way they talk i can tell you which caste they are itna problem ho gaya mera so uh, especially when they're bengali right yeah um, so this kind of stupid stuff can be said only by urban upper caste who have gone to the elite institutions yeah he has studied in presidency yeah <laughs> so that's the whole point that if if um you know these people think that they so uh they don't have basic logic they don't know anything but i think at the, like i said at the, in the heart of hearts they know that a hindu resurgence in the form of bjp means actually a lower caste uprising against them this is something they will not be able to handle in the long run because itne salo say they have kept their elitism protected thanks to the left like right. I said, the left is undemocratic. But Absolutely. Because it is undemocratic, there is no threat to their authority. Yeah. But once development happens, job happens, that one, that the person who's uh, washing dishes in your house, hmm. that person's son or daughter may get a nice job and, and challenge your hegemony. And the Hindus who work in our houses as maids and stuff, the, the neighborhoods they live in, they are facing the direct brunt of Patharbazi. And these yeah. upper caste Brahmins of, of Kolkata have absolute no clue what's going yeah. on in those you neighborhoods. Even your flat in South City, how will you ever know what, what's happening yeah. uh, in the border districts? In, in what's yeah. happening in Chandesh Kali? How would you know? Yeah. Right? You yeah. have no idea of what's happening. You have no idea what's happening in your neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. Let alone what's happening in South Bengal, what's happening in North Bengal, what, what tribals are dying in. Uh, in Pushchim Mednipur, yeah. what what happened in Morijabi, you are shielded. And even when yeah. you know, you're like, you know, it's my, um, hai par mera hai. Yeah. so I can kill my own people. My my interests are okay with that. I, I am okay when I kill people. Yeah. But if Haris, what they perceive of, uh, if Gujaratis kill people, I am right. not okay with it. Yeah, that's As their worst as, fear actually. I, I people, upper caste kill, upper caste Bengalis kill lower caste Bengalis, hmm. I am so happy. Their Communist. worst fear I'm not is. About every upper caste. I'm talking about communists and yeah. socialists. Yeah. If if BJP comes to power, their worst fear is that it will uh, Bengal will be filled with Bhojpuri music. That's the worst thing that can happen to uh, to our state apparently. And people yeah. will celebrate Ram Lord Ram with with uh, songs of uh, Bihar. Yeah, and this this is this is what happens when you have no idea of reality. Anyway, with the lowest possible birth rates in the country, I'm assuming that. Yeah. The Bhadralo class will be wiped out. The, yeah, yeah. the hereditary Bhadralo class will be wiped out in the next uh, two generations. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. The hereditary Bhadralo. I mean, yeah. the upper caste Bengali uh, Bengalis. Yeah. What will remain of Bengali perhaps is the middle castes, the lower castes who are still somewhat doing to business. Some some of them are still land owning. Some of them do agricultural labor, etc. These are the people who will uh, thrive. Yeah. in the future that's my understanding now one question i got pretty early in the live stream is that uh, since uh, this is a common myth uh, uh, which people outside bengal don't understand that since we have about let's say 30 percent uh, muslims in our state how will bjp ever come to power in west bengal no so this is a fallacy this is yeah. how the left this is a left uh, you know uh, thought process essentially hmm. muslims are 30 percent but they are concentrated only in certain vidhan sabha and lok sabha seats yeah so roughly 75 Lok Sabha, uh, Vidhan Sabha seats are there where Muslims dominate and uh, around uh, 7 or 8 uh, Lok Sabha seats. Yeah. But if you see the vast majority of Vidhan Sabha and Lok Sabha seats which are on the western part of the state, hmm. which is much less, which has a much lower Muslim concentration, there uh, the majority seats are controlled by Hindu. In fact, it is there that BJP performed poorly. BJP performed well in the seats where there were 20 to 30 percent Muslims. Hmm. Because the Hindus of the same seats, they were hmm. like, Bhai, abhi to kuch karna padega. So they voted hmm. for BJP in 2021. Yeah. BJP lost the tribal and Shirul caste votes in the in the uh, place where it was supposed to do well. Yeah, even Diamond Harbor, uh, Muslim dominated uh, Panchayat area was yeah, won yeah, by yeah. BJP long back in 2019 or 20. Yeah, 1819. 
the yeah. bjp's strength uh, you, you know earlier before yeah. shubhendu became so powerful was in the areas where there was a direct uh, you know uh, chance of confrontation with muslims mm-hmm. so the voters got polarized yeah now in in purulia where there is a very low muslim concentration mm-hmm. there bjp lost because bjp became overtly confident Hmm. inducted a bunch of tmc leaders they hmm. thought they'd win the match uh, yeah. but it didn't happen yeah. now what happens with shubhendu shubhendu belongs to midnapur which is on the western part of the yeah. state yeah now he knows these areas really well hmm. really well he speaks like them yeah he talks and walks like them okay even minakshi so, mukherji <laughs> i'm sorry this is this is why you know the the left will not be able to do anything precisely because look at the way in which the bjp co-opted the best players of the tmc and congress yeah. into their party directly or indirectly the bjp is is like a corporate house okay yeah. like like if if tata tata uh, sees that somebody is working really well in cognizant they yeah. will give the guy nice offers and bring them yeah now cpim because it is so casteist and so elitist it has to have its top leadership only among those who did sfi in college right that limits Absolutely. their <laughs> that limits their ability to get newer talent yeah in the party structure at the top yeah or these people because they are sfi and all and they are basically <laughs> deluded of reality they, they mm. don't live in the real world mm. they think that these you know knowing uh, the history of the uh, third commune in paris will get you votes in rural bengal ye sab nahi hota yeah cpim does everything uh, you know, one thing every year uh, plenum bolta hai usko okay so the plenum is where they discuss the policies of the communist parties in different parts of the world okay you really think that 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 the that a poor farmer in uh, 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 you know uh, midnapur west midnapur gives a damn about the communist party of cuba i guess they are trying to learn something from the damn about the communist party of calcutta west bengal i call it the communist party of calcutta when most leaders are calcuttans yeah okay yeah so they don't they are so disconnected from the ground yeah. shubhendu odi is the exact opposite he is what gramshi would call an organic intellectual strangely uh, that's a leftist <laughs> term but he is more connected with the ground level people hmm. than any leader in west bengal right now absolutely any anyway. yeah Okay. probably only mamta banerji show but you have to understand she was always calcutta centric her leadership and power were always calcutta centric actually yeah true and those roots are in the village yes, in the yes. old congressy roots yes so that's the thing yeah um someone had asked this earlier that uh, what do you think of uh, is there any connection between cpim and dmk In yes terms of collaboration uh, this is very interesting so there is a great political scientist called mukulika banerji okay in london school of economics okay and she drew a comparison between um, uh, ye tamil nadu ka chief minister kon tha uh, that woman jayalalita uh, jayalalita jayalalita and mamuta okay okay so she said this is cpm is a mainly male dominated communist party uh, dmk is a primarily male dominated a uh, kind of pseudo communist party hmm. and the uh, jayalalita is this uh, woman who dresses up in a sari and uh, you know mamta banerji is also like that you know dresses up in a sari and fights against the hmm. uh, mem- uh, you know men of the uh, of the uh, typically the dominant caste men uh, of the state right yeah. and uh, she exercises complete control over uh, the her own party members so yeah. this is more like a leader based versus cadre based equation yeah. that i do out of that yeah. but this is the limitation of any kind of leader based party if right. your leaders are lost or your leaders uh, yeah. you know the the yeah, the interest of the leaders part. so yeah. let's say the bjp uh, modi and amit shah make huge blunders yeah okay hindutva ke wajah se vote nahi harenge hindutva mm. will be there yeah if they imagine if all of us were communists mm-hmm. then CPIM would still get the vote. Yeah. Even when even when they messed up real bad. Exactly. Right. So there is a place for ideological politics that has always defeated cadre based politics. Right. When played right, when played correctly. Yeah. And the default setting of the DNA of the people of India is Hindutva. Hmm. 
not communism which is why communism may have lasted a while but yeah. it it's it's time has almost come up like yeah. communists yeah. will never thrive in an information economy hmm people Especially are able to access, with access information the communists will fin like they are like the vampires they they yeah. will just vanish in the delight and especially i think uh, in the age of uh, so many english speaking uh, even suburban uh, young people pe- people below 30s and 20s and uh, them getting english education at the same time getting an internet connection for cheap and them watching yeah. jsai deepak videos but also ben shapiro thomas sowell jordan peterson all these things have contributed to the demise of communism in the minds hearts and minds of young people yeah 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 the the thing is that um could you just repeat the last time i think there was a disturbance in the okay thing. no it's not a question really it's uh, more of a comment that even the impact yeah, yeah. of the daily wire ben shapiro jordan peterson yeah, 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 jay yeah. sadipak all these have come together to defeat communism in the minds of english speaking uh, kids below 30 below 20 etc yeah 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 that that works number 1 number 2 is um you know people have come to the realization that buddha babu had many years ago right if i kick out every capital is who's going to bloody give the jobs yeah Okay. Yeah. 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 Problem is with government jobs. The thing is, most people think I am owed a government job mm-hmm. in India still, and that's why we have like a bunch of series by TVF. Ki yeah, you can crack. I'm not against that, but I'm saying that be realistic. If there are, if there are a billion people in this country, yeah. how many people will even get jobs? Yeah. In the public sector, it's not realistic. Yeah. Even at the height of Nehruvian socialism, when <coughs> practically everything was state controlled in the at the height of Indira Gandhi's socialism. Yeah. there was huge unemployment a, yeah. a, a government government employment is never going to be the way out in the future yeah actually just uh, day before yesterday in the india today conclave the journalist uh, asked like a devil's advocate question to nirmala sitaraman that some opposition people are asking for a right to uh, jobs or permanent jobs etc nirmala sitaraman said that it doesn't matter if i just declare something a right which is basically almost a thomas sowell quote that if you can yeah. declare anything a right it's not going to fall from the sky we have given yeah. more jobs than the past governments anyway it doesn't not matter if we declare it a right or not yeah and the bigger issue here is with the government jobs there is always the problem which bengal is absolutely facing right now that people with money or resources get are at at a higher advantage at a greater advantage to get government jobs hmm. this is a reality hmm. whether it is because they can afford the best coaching centers yeah. or it is because they can bribe the right netas hmm. it is a reality their government jobs will never work for a meritocratic population yeah at the long run yeah okay unless everything is absolutely digitized everything is you know like there's Like twelve, अरे twelve fail कितनी कितने लोग होते हैं that twelve fail movie that came out how many yeah. people are like that yeah and that too I'm talking about UPSC I'm not even talking about WBCS where there are huge uh, you know corruption angles and all yeah so and uh, you know, someone is asking here an important question that uh, uh, what do you think of uh, when when delimitation takes place uh, what's going to be the scene of Bengal or its impacts <laughs> I think uh, all I can say is what's happening in Assam will be happening here in a few months. Okay, that's all I'll say. Okay, what does BJP need to prioritize first and foremost when it comes to power in Bengal? I think the people have spoken here. They want jobs which are like in both ways. So first, through corporate investment, hmm. and for that you need to improve law and order. That's exactly. a given. Yes. Uh, through government avenues where you don't have to bribe people for a job. Yeah. that is the bigger demand and i think it's it's good that all this came out before the bjp is coming to power yeah all this you know scams and everything regarding jogan obijit ganguly became a hero for that reason because yeah you see this is this is absolutely if the bjp came to power and the same guys joined the bjp yeah. and you have the same kind of corruption in jobs hmm. then what's even the point of the bjp coming to power yeah right yeah so i think these are the primary jobs 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 okay <laughs> Paul that's Ryan. it. Yeah, yeah, and that's how you'll get it. And I think it's good. We we experienced communism when we did. Yeah. Now it's there's a normalization of capitalism in the minds of Bengali normal people. I'm not talking about the elites of the three great universities. I'm not talking about those people. Yeah. I'm talking about the normal, you know, you know, office worker and all these hmm. uh, who know that without Ammani Adani. 
Indian economy is doomed and so is Bengal's economy. Yeah. Right. So this is just, that's just a natural progression from there. Yeah. Anyway. And uh, yeah, we are nearing the last end bit, uh, last bit of our live stream. We have just about five minutes with him. Uh, so professor, uh, someone had asked this, uh, what did you think of Buster? Have you watched Buster yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Do you think it's important to make uh, such a movie like Buster? I think that Buster does something that uh, was long overdue. Hmm. Buster shows us the actual violence of the left. Hmm. The left's violence has been spoken of in the past, what they could do. Hmm. But how they did it physically, hmm. that is that has not been documented well enough. Yeah. I, I would recommend uh, a movie to everyone. I think it's available on Amazon Prime. Or if you're into illegal downloads, I don't know. Hmm. Um, uh, Stalin, uh, the death of Stalin. Hmm. There wasn't one doctor left in Moscow when hmm. Stalin died. Hmm. Actually, Stalin didn't die so easily. Stalin had a heart attack. Okay. They couldn't find a doctor because Stalin had put most doctors in jail. Okay. And killed them. Because... He feared that one of them would kill him. Okay. So they couldn't find a doctor and Stalin, you know, shat his pants and okay. lay there. Okay. And anyone and everyone, people knew he was dead. Finally, when he did die, hmm. his close comrades who were basically, you know, like the Bangla Pakko people nowadays. Okay. They are his close comrades and the, you know, people who were there. Um, even the doctors, they were scared to declare him dead. Okay. Because if he came back alive and he knew that somebody declared him dead, yeah, yeah. that person would be killed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah. it is essential that people know what was happening hmm. uh, in, in, in USSR, in, in North Korea. There is even a movie recently on the North Korean regime, yeah. uh, which is a documentary, which is a celebrated documentary. I think uh, I can send you the name of the movie. Okay. You can put it on your community post. Okay. Um, it is on how and why people escape North Korea, despite the overwhelming odds against right. them. Yeah. In North Korea, most people are thin. In, in Venezuela, most people are thin because they don't get nutrition. Yeah. Basic dal bhat, they don't get that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... Buster, I think, does a very important thing of showing this violence. Okay. It's easy to read it in books, but it's never as good uh, when you when you're like you're seeing like Schindler's List. Schindler's List was absolutely essential to understand the horrors of the Holocaust, right? Hmm. So the same way, uh, it is essential to visualize the horrors hmm. that people saw in in people have seen in the villages of West Bengal. Yeah. Right. Because I think we come closest to Buster. Yeah. And the last question is being asked by our regular viewer M Shastri here that do you think if BJP comes to power, it will unleash zero tolerance policy against mafias like Yogi's bulldozer Raj? That's the last question. I think it will take some time. It okay. might happen. It might happen by the second uh, uh, term. Yape, there is one guarantee. Once people get some money in their pockets, hmm. they will vote for BJP for 30 years. <laughs> Guaranteed. Wo nostalgia mein chalega, pura. Okay. Right. Yeah. People here don't have critical thinking. People have don't don't have spines. They will no matter what BJP does, as long as the they keep the money coming every month, some hmm. kind of money, some kind of thing, yeah. they will keep voting for BJP. Yeah. Okay. If if JU and presidency were not able to create critical thinking, what is the solution to this particular thing? Critical thinking. Yeah. Critical thinking happens on never happens on an empty stomach. You give people mm, jobs. Exactly. Give people time to watch right. good movies, read good books. They True. will they will develop some faculties. Exactly. And I don't think critical thinking. I think critical thinking against the government is overrated. By critical okay. thinking means whether you are able to um, logically rationalize. Yeah. Uh, what is in front of you? Not say that. Uh, oh, two deaths are uh, worse than 50 deaths because mm. these happen to Muslims. Mm. Okay. You, yeah. you have to learn to challenge yourself. That is mm. critical thinking. Yeah. Not the government all the time. Government ko challenge karna is now mainstream. Greta yeah. Thunberg does it. Yeah. I had once uh, written somewhere that, uh, you know, why, why why doesn't Greta Thunberg talk about uh, pollution in Dubai? 
Yeah. Dubai is the most polluting uh, city in the world, if I am not mistaken. I see. Uh, Dubai has literally destroyed the uh, biodiversity around it. Okay. Why doesn't Greta Thunberg go there and talk, tell the sheikhs of Dubai, hmm. how dare you? <laughs> uh. Yeah. And ah, it, becomes, it becomes yeah. a cliche to such an extent that the government quickly realizes that they are just a nice controlled opposition to have. There are cool demonstrations going on in college campuses while I go on doing my thing. And that was, I think, yeah, yeah. one of the biggest mistakes that Mamta Banerjee made when she attacked JU students inside JU. That why? Why would you? No one gave a shit about them anyway. People were beginning to hate them anyway because of their, let's say, progressive uh, sexual culture, etc. <laughs> or getting stoned, etc. But all of a sudden, they became the the the, the, the um, uh, objects of sympathy because Mamta Banerjee uh, uh, tried to uh, beat them up and beat them up with the police. No, I'll tell you something that has changed after the recent suicide at JU. Hmm. Jadavpur University has lost all its credibility completely. Hmm. The left student movement, hmm. if I can call it that, movement matlab you are going towards something. Yeah. These people are doing it to maintain the status quo. They are bigger fascists than bloody Hitler. Yeah. So um, these people, they they now they are ridiculed by normal people. Hmm. Like if you ask, if you ask, if you go to a daily wage laborer hmm. and you hmm. say, uh, "Dada, uh, something is happening in Jadavpur University," hmm. he will say how the hell does that concern me hmm. what have those kids ever done for anyone except hmm. getting the cushy jobs and and corporate salaries and their parents uh, businesses and all hum logo ke liye presidency jadavpur ke students ne kya kiya yeah nothing hmm. ek naxalite movement kiya tha wo bhi khud ka foreign mein establish karne ke liye yeah. so what's even the point of yeah. these people so they have no mass following anymore yeah. and especially some people started making videos like murder poor and all that hmm. which have been popularly liked by many hmm. even some activists some mainstream activists of west bengal went against jadavpur i see because the students in jadavpur typically say when you when you say that uh, oh jadavpur university is uh, has a horrible ragging culture and everything yeah. they say are chance pe dekha yeah okay. get get admission into jadavpur then we'll talk yeah this kind of arrogance yeah. is not accepted by most people are not stupid you see they just didn't have the information before yeah if you stop them watching hollywood if you stop them reading books and all that whatever the communist party did right banning mm. english and everything yeah so they just were devoid they were not they were deprived of information right. once there was a flood of information thanks to ambani bhai <laughs> then they then they are aware of what's happening yeah. slowly and okay. that is what will change yeah. everything okay uh, professor uh, lize a lot thank you for joining us and uh, also this yeah. is our biggest hit from any live stream i'll just tell you the statistics now we still have concurrent 178 viewers 206 likes and a total of 4627 views okay before even ending the live stream so we'll need you okay. back very so soon so you share you share your uh, this the income with me next month okay <laughs> yes yes See, as good communists we must share our resources this is our <laughs> it's, it's our stream. live stream now. it's yes. not my live stream <laughs> true true yeah so thank and, you thank uh, you yeah we need to come back for discussing jati varna with our uh, tantra specialist humanities professor oh yeah 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 absolutely and we will discuss uh, uh, savarkar movie oh yes 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 okay thank okay. you professor yeah. good night yeah you're welcome love love today's session yeah thank you Okay then guys uh, is there any important question here uh, okay yeah nice discussion going on here i basically agree with you all uh, what is wrong with being ruled by sita and draupadi or positive matriarchy toxic matri- toxic matriarchy mamta is the problem now you see it's not exactly patriarchy or matriarchy is the is the problem or something it's just that uh, does someone get elected for their gender then it's it becomes a problem usually and uh, see indira gandhi was not a matriarchal sort of a person right uh, if if she was a man it would be very understandable by feminists that oh yeah she was a man that's why she do- did those or uh, it's it's in the, it's not indira gandhi it's uh, indra indira gandhi that's why these bad things happened but she went out of her way and did a lot of things which which surprised people that oh my god a woman can do these things i thought women were just nice uh, motherly figures 
so it's not about gender ever uh, it's not about whether the government is run by patriarchy or matriarchy see some things are really simple uh, even answering some things are really easy it's just when you need to cover up bullshit you need to get into a lot of theory or when you are uh, being faced with some allegation where there is about like like uh, um, layers and layers of facts and truths that are being hidden ignoring some truths when some allegations are being heard hurled at you then you need to get into some nuances but some things are really easy to uh, speak of like you need to have strong law and order who would really disagree with this okay you need to have strong law and order so that investments can come in the state so that business can function so that uh, contracts can be enforced and everyone earns their own money everyone goes home happy everyone invests in education personally it's okay everyone can afford a great healthcare because they have money to earn etc but it does not depend whether it's a man or a woman or a hijra running the state okay you just need to have a strong law and order no matter who is running no matter whether it's patriarchal or, or a matriarchal society law and order whatever laws that we have in the constitution they need to be enforced it's just the matter of that now where the where does the problem come in in terms of enforcing law and order that is something called majoritarianism written by professor koshi gangopadhyay uh, this this book destroys all majoritarian myths with whom i'm uh, in po- all possibility going to do a podcast on on thursday night 8 pm okay he has written this fin- fantastic book describing and, and basically demolishing the entire majoritarian myth why it does not make sense to base anything on that but the problem is that our law and order is mainly not enforced because of this majoritarian myth that what if the minorities get harassed some minority of some kind gets harassed and then after that comes the layers of uh, a big, having a big over uh, overarching all empowering government in the first place where if you if you give everyone the responsibility and duty to make your life better if that government is your my bab then that person will do things that you don't like that person will cut corners that 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 government will have its its favorite people where where they will uh, give your freebies to that person to that political party worker instead of you and therefore again you will be screwed and you can't go to the police because it's a majoritarian myth on top of that there's actually corruption which happens in a in a governmental situation now we can't become usa also directly we can't become an imaginary libertarian state i guess uh, even uh, libertarians don't say that america is libertarian their favorite country is estonia okay that's how hypothetical libertarian ends up being that it's practiced only in one country where where no one goes it's it's not really facing any threat it's very small in number that's just like saying norway uh, socialism is great because norway has uh, great free healthcare okay it's just one small country it's the size of a uh, football field near my house but when it's one person running 50 people versus one person running 200 people it's still one person running the entire country so the population and size of the country does matter so uh, we need a lot more libertarianism a lot more taking away of authority power and duties from the government but of course we can't go full libertarian but for now one solution would be that no matter what gender you are what age you are just follow enforce law and order forget majoritarianism myth and don't let government do everything and therefore prevent them from helping out only the people they like personally okay uh Thank you for joining the live stream guys good night